righty, guys. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You're watching Jumpstart with Angel Baker. It's our Saturday night bling and gleam where we come. Normally, we showcase $5 jewelry. Tonight, we are going to forego that because I have some great, great, I have a great lineup for you tonight. So what we're going to do, as we always do, we'll give a few moments for people to get those notifications and come on um, and join the conversation tonight. Just want to say thank you every week. You guys are so supportive. Hello, I see you coming in. Hello, hello. Come on in. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for joining tonight. Thank you so much for joining. We are excited to have you. I tell you what, though, we are more excited about having this conversation tonight. It's so needed. And so I'm inviting you to get in these comments tonight, y'all. We want y'all to share your questions. We want you to chime in on the conversation. And uh, at the end of the day, we want, of course, we want the Lord to be glorified. All right. So we're going to give just a few moments for people to come on. And uh, meanwhile, we just ask that you would uh, just hang out with us for just a few more moments. And we're going to get it started. So just in case, um, those of you that don't know what we're talking about tonight, hello, hello, guys. Say hello when you come in. And let us know that you are here. Let us know that you are here. Okay, say hello. All right, let's see who we have. All right, hey, Charles, how are you, dear? Hey, Aunt Vern. All right, thank you guys for watching. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys. I see you, I see you. Hello, hello. Hey, Autumn, how are you, dear? All right, all right, all right, guys. Thank you for coming on. Hey, Todd, come on in. Come on in, guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hey, uh, Tamika James, how you doing, dear? How you doing? All right, y'all, listen. It's going to be a very real conversation tonight. I hope you are ready. We are really, really excited. Very, very excited. All right, y'all. I see you in the building tonight representing. Hey, Brother Joe, Sister Sonia. Thank y'all so much for coming on tonight. So, so thankful. I tell you, I don't believe you're going to regret it tonight. We are hoping really to just water your hearts. We're hoping to really just make you feel right at home. And I tell you what else, we are also wanting to make sure that you can identify with, you know, these things that we're sharing tonight. We want to make it very real for you. We hope you can identify with what we're going to share tonight. So I have some very, very special guests. Hey, Sister Bobby, how you doing? So guys, if I didn't call your name, um, just know that it's because I do not see you popping in. But if you want me to know you're here, all you got to do is put an emoji in the comments or you can um, just say hello, wave or something in the comments so that I can acknowledge you. I love to do that. Love to greet you. All right, y'all. So we are going to, I think we're about good. I think we're about there. We are about there. We are about there. I'm really excited about my guest tonight. As you can see, I have my mom. And I have my brother on tonight. Hey, Miss Sherry. Come on in, guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hey, Asia, how are you? So glad you can make it tonight. All right, y'all. Come on in. All right. Okay, so listen, we are broadcasting tonight just to kind of explain a little bit because I know some of you might be like, well, I don't see as many comments. So let me explain. We are broadcasting on two different pages tonight. We are broadcasting on our church page, but we are also broadcasting on my personal page. So it doesn't matter. Hey, Kurt, wherever you are watching from, we can see everything thing that you say and share even if it's quiet on your end we can see everything that is shared so uh listen you can join us either way we can um we can definitely see you okay all right all right yes ma'am i'm blessed too thank you for joining thank you thank you thank you all right guys let's go ahead and get into it i think we are good now thank you so much for being on tonight again my name is angel baker i am um first i am the dream builders um institute and foundation CEO and founder, and also I own um, Jumpstart with Angel, which is a, a paparazzi um, business where I sell 
fabulous five dollar jewelry guys so i do a little bit of everything but tonight the focus is going to be on continuing our mental health series all right y'all know we've been talking we've been having this conversation about how important it is to be open about where we are to talk about you know owning your disappointments talking about owning your feelings talking about owning where you've been um and and we've just we we've really been having those real conversations y'all have been great y'all been getting Getting in the conversation, y'all get in these comments. So just a disclaimer, we do share comments across the screen. If you don't want that, you want to be more private, just let us know. And we, we don't mind at all. But guys, we want you to get in the conversation. All right. The goal really has been to break the stigma of, of mental health. It doesn't matter whether it's the church, whether it's at home, whether it's in the workplace, we want to break the stigma. That's the thing. We want to come against the thing that says, if I'm smart enough, if I'm strong enough, if I'm spiritual enough, then I should not have to deal with these mental illnesses, right? But the reality is just as we learned about Paul, right? We've been talking about that for a couple of weeks. Paul himself had a thorn and guess what? Sometimes guys, we have these things in our lives that we wrestle with. And so we wanna have a real conversation tonight about sometimes the things that we take to church with us, okay? And, and unfortunately, those same things we tend to take back home with us. And sometimes it is week after week, right? We're going to have conversations about that tonight. We're going to talk to you about what you should see um, happening in your ministry as it relates to mental health. We also want to talk to you tonight about what you should be implementing, okay? If you don't see it in your church, some of the things you can implement, we're going to talk about that tonight. And we are also going to give you some statistics. So maybe you're not convinced yet. Maybe you're one of those, you know, who uh, kind of feels like, well, you know, I I'm sort of of that old volition. Look, pray fast, get on your knees and honey, you'll get delivered. That's going to be it. Listen, you don't need no medicine. You don't need a counselor, all of that. Maybe if you are of that volition, we're going to talk to you tonight. Maybe this conversation will help you to see things a little bit differently. So guys, that's just a little bit of a uh, an opener just to let you know what we are doing tonight. Now, once again, we want you to get in these comments. All right, so I am going to do, without further ado, I'm going to introduce to you my mother first. My mother is uh, Dr. Faye Baker. She is the pastor of Ever Ready for Gospel Tabernacle. And she is also an author of the book Life Poems. I will share that information with you later. Um, and she has just been pastoring for over 20 something years. She served in ministry for well over, what, 50 years? Yes, at least she served in ministry at least about 40 something years, about 40 something years. So listen, you're not talking to novices tonight. You are talking to people who are seasoned. One thing about her, my mom has 20 something children. Okay. Great. <laughs> so qualifies her and she has tons of grands i'm not even going to try to give you the number all right and she also has great grandchildren and she has helped raise them all so guess what if you're not convinced yet just hang on in here once you hear what's going to come out of her mouth you will know and understand she has a revelation for you all right um and then i want to enter so hey say hello mom hello all right y'all let's, let's give it some hearts the fabulous pastor faye baker all right, y'all. So uh, yes. we want to thank you so much for that. Now we're going to get into it with my brother all the way from Dallas, Texas. All yes. right. I'm so excited to have him on. He and I are sort of like twins. We're not twins. We're about 14 months apart. <laughs> But that's how, kind of how we've always been. Uh, I love him. He's always been a, 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 an important voice in my life. He's always actually he, he's my brother, but he's always had the voice of a father in my life. And times when I needed clarity, you know, he has really, really spoken into my life. He's always had that thing of wisdom. And so I'm so honored tonight to have him on with me tonight, all the way again from Dallas, Texas. Uh, he is a father of five kids. Uh huh. Don't have Four kids. kids. Like, oh, don't, add, don't add no I'm kids to me. No, no. He's going to win. Yes, but he is a grandpa now. Okay. So he has <laughs> he's got one grandkid. That's right. Yeah, that's right. I don't right. think Jaden got 
started yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. So, so he, he, and, and he's married to the fabulous Tina. They have a cooking show together. I'm going to share all that with you. He doesn't know it. I have uh, all that stuff uh, laid out for you guys. I'm going to share it with you so you can go over and follow them, support them, shop with them, shop with my mom and just show your love tonight. All right. So guys, we are going to get into it. All right. Y'all are already in these comments. Hey, Georgiana. Hey, Gina. Hey, Tawanda. Hey, Sharonia. How you doing? All right. Hey, Risa. How you doing, baby? All right, y'all. So let's go ahead and get into it. As I said, the focus here. So I, I want to kind of start this out with a question. Have you ever asked the question, do you see me? Do you see me? That's that's the question I want to ask you tonight. Have you ever asked that question? Do you see me? Well, mm -hmm. tonight this comes. Hey, Aunt Lynn, um, the conversation here tonight is going to be about just that. We're going to talk about how important it is to pay attention. OK, if you've ever asked that question, maybe you work in ministry, maybe you serve in ministry. Right. And you go, you serve, you know, you 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 uh, trust or honor the Lord in the work that you do for him. But you find yourself sometimes struggling privately with things, wrestling with things, dealing with things. But you are afraid to have the conversation with the people that you do service with. Well, let me tell you what. Sometimes there's a disconnect, guys. There is a disconnect between who we serve with and who we do life with. Do you all hear me? Who we serve with and who we do life with. Bottom line, we can come, we can fellowship together, we can do church together, all of that. But at the end of the day, there are parts of our lives that we keep private. Do you all hear me? All right. So if you, uh, if all right, so Wanda, there she is. Okay. All right. So what we want to get into tonight is, have you ever asked that question? Do you see me? Okay. Well, let me explain. If you've ever asked that question, okay, it's a very valid question, but here's what I want you to hear tonight, okay? Here is what I want you to hear. Are you ready? I hope y'all have something to write with because we're going to be dropping some nuggets tonight. The real question that you have to ask yourself is this. Do you, have you spoken up? Okay. Have you spoken up? Because sometimes inwardly we have that question. We're saying, do you see me? Do you see my struggles? Do you see what I'm wrestling with? Do you see what I'm going through? As leaders, as pastors, yes, it's important, right, y'all? It's, it's important to pay attention to your people. Pay attention to how they are. Pay attention to how, what they do. Pay attention, pay attention, pay attention, because then you can recognize when something's off. Maybe you can recognize when something's wrong. Maybe you can recognize when there's an issue that maybe they are afraid to talk about. We, we put so much pressure on our leaders to discern what's going on with us. That's not always going to be the case, especially depending on what they're carrying. They don't always have the capacity to be able to discern what's going on with everybody in their following. Do you understand what I'm saying? So that is when it becomes up to you. And we're going to talk about later how it's important for leaders then to implement programs and things and an outreach community. I know at Potter's House, y'all had connect groups. It's important for leaders to implement certain things to make sure there's always check-ins, right? But if your pastor or your leader does not check in with you, I want to put the responsibility back on you. Sometimes, guys, you just have to speak up. OK, you just have to speak up. So when you find yourself feeling that way, rest, uh, wrestling with that and wondering, you know, uh, about you know, that, you know, am I seen, am I heard? Do they care more about me or, or, or do they care more about what I do for them? Speak up. You have to speak up. OK, now I'm going to give you these statistics and then I'm going to turn it over to these uh, beautiful uh, guests we have here. I'm gonna, we're going to get into some real questions here, but I want to show you all something. What are some of the reasons why we don't seek help? Number one, self-sufficiency. I can do it on my own. Number two, the fear of the stigma. Number three, confidentiality concerns. We're talking about why people don't speak up. All right. Number four, lack of accessibility. I don't know where to go to go. I don't know who to turn to. Number five, 
uh, low knowledge. I don't, I don't even know what to look for. Who, you know, how, how, who do I go to? What kind of help do I need? And number six, lack of trust. So with that in mind, guys, and this is just my little opener so that I can uh, drop some things here that you will remember. In case you're not convinced, listen to these statistics. All right, y'all ready? 23% of pastors acknowledge they have personally struggled with mental <laughs> illness. 49% of pastors say they rarely or never speak to their congregation about mental illness. That is 50%. Never speak to their congregation about mental illness. 27% of churches have a plan to assist families affected by mental illness. So in other words, only 27% guys actually have a, pan, a plan in place. Next, 65% of church going family members of those with mental illness want to talk to their church openly about mental illness. So basically the desire is there. Some people want to speak up, but the resources aren't there. So we're going to talk about that in a minute. 59% of those actually suffering from mental illness say the same. And I could go on, but I want to hear, read you this one. 60, I mean, 76%. Listen, guys. This is very sobering. 76% of church goers say suicide is a problem that needs to be addressed in their company or within their ministry. 80% of pastors say their church is equipped, okay, to, to assist someone who is threatening to take his or her own life, okay? 4% of churchgoers who lost a loved one to suicide say church leaders were aware of their leaders, I mean, of their loved one's struggle. Now, that right there is the one I want to, I'm going to stop on that one. Listen, listen, listen. 4%, I said 4% of churchgoers who lost a loved one to suicide say church leaders were even aware of their loved one's struggles. That is a great, great, great place to start. 4%. Only 4% were aware. So can you imagine what that feels like when someone in your ministry takes their own life and you weren't even aware of what was going on? Someone in your ministry takes the life of someone else and you weren't even aware of what was going on. I wish I could say these things weren't happening, but they are happening, right? Have y'all, you've seen it, right? You, you've seen it, okay? So this is where we want to start tonight. I gave you the reasons why people don't get help. And then I, I just gave you some statistics here. So let's get into this conversation tonight. The first thing we want to talk about is I, I want each one of my guests, I want them to give you some uh, background information on themselves so that you know where they're coming from. You can know a little bit about them. All right, so that's gonna be my first question tonight. All right, guys, later in this segment, I'm gonna ask you to put some questions in the comments, okay? All right, so the first thing's gonna be, tell us about your ministry and professional background. All right, we'll let my mom go first. Tell us a little bit about your ministry and professional background. Okay. Hello, everyone. It is good to be here to share with you. And I do have a background in pastoring. I've counseled on uh, quite a few levels of marriage, um, in relationships, addictions, just different things. I have uh, 20 uh, grandkids that I counsel. I have uh, six children that I counsel and about uh, 11 great grands that I counsel on, on their level. I've also worked with uh, with kids in school um, ages 5 through 12. I've had opportunity to share with them and deal with some of the issues that they have. Um, and within our ministry, we do uh, keep in touch with the, our, our congregation. And I guess I may do it a little bit much, and especially during, during this time in our lives, I do uh, seek the call. And so um, I do know uh, what it is to have to uh, be there for people, uh, even from yeah. a pastor's point of view, to know and to understand what they are going through. And I trust to you know, be able to do that. And uh, so I continue to seek the Lord concerning those issues. I thank God that I also 
the Lord has gifted us where we do have the spirit of discerning. So we are able to discern when our, uh, when people are going through certain things and when they need uh, counsel, when they need to be spoken to. So that is my background. I have been in ministry for over 40 years and I have been pastoring now for 33 years. And so I just yeah. praise God for that. So uh, I enjoy what I do. Amen. And she's good at what she does. And, uh, you know, that's the thing as our mom, you know, she, she's definitely, um, walked this thing out. It's not something that, you know, she just does in front of the pulpit, but this is something that she walks, you know, she walks out. All right. So how about you, Mr. Baker, brother Baker? Let me add to before Chris comes on, I have a, have a, I had some husband that I also, uh, counsel. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, that's all right. funny. I, uh, yeah, I am Faye and Paul's baby boy. And mm -hmm. that's really the highlight of my existence. Um, just like you said, Angel, we have been blessed to watch Ma and Dad not just love God, but I, we watch you all love people. And everything yeah. that you have said about just having a heart for God's people, just having a heart for people in general. I mean, I, I recall people coming in, they were drunk i recall drug addicts i recall people that were having marital issues and you yeah. never turned them away you were always you. come in let me pray with you you know what chris you know i'll get to you in a minute this sister right here needs something so having that example and seeing that um was a tremendous blessing and it gave me um in a sense to have a heart for for people as well um every you know i've been in music my whole life uh, i'm a church baby we all are church babies born in church I say you're a church baby when you know you've been left in church when they left you there at the Terrian service. When they left you at church, that's how you know you're a church baby. Yeah. We are church babies. Um, yeah, been in, been in church, been in music my whole life, and uh, I've been fortunate enough to see a lot of great things and experience a lot of great things. I went to college, studied classical music, got a degree in that, and um, thought I was going to do music my whole life, and then God kind of mm -hmm. woke up this thing in me to... Um, just understanding the thought pattern, the, the pathologies of people and how they think, how they process. And so I went and I got my master's in industrial and organizational psychology. And uh, so um, I deal with therapy. I deal with counseling. Um, I'm a pastor. I am a friend. Um, I'm just a human that's trying to make it through this thing called life because I don't have mm -hmm. the answer. But I have a relationship with the one that does have the answer. So that's the way I approach life. And, and yeah, honored to be a part of the show tonight, Angel. Yeah, that's good. That's good. That's good. That's right. We don't always have all the answers. And I think that's uh, one of the things, too, that we have to make sure as um, as leaders that we don't uh, paint this gospel in the sense that, you know, you come to the Lord and, hey, all your you're going to understand everything, you know, you're, you're going to be able to uh, walk this thing out, you know, uh, just in a breeze or whatever. You know, we, we have to have those honest conversations like, listen, <laughs> part of salvation is a cross, <laughs> you know, part of salvation is a cross, you know. But the beautiful part about it is, is uh, the Lord is there and his grace is there to help us to carry our crosses. And we all have one to bear. So, um, you know, that that's really important. Thank you all for that. All right, so let's keep on going here. So then how do you feel like, Chris, your experience? Mom, how do you feel like your experience has um, helped really to shape how you serve in ministry? How is it helping? Well, with, with me, um, it just, it gives me to know that uh, some things, in order to help someone else, sometimes you, uh, there are experiences that you have to have yourself or that the Lord allows us to have ourselves. So there are some experiences that we have encountered our, our own selves. And um, it has really helped me to under, to be able to understand uh, people better. And I can honestly say during this um, pandemic, I have really, really come to understand mm -hmm. um, even more the needs of people, having to do uh, things virtual and this kind of thing. So it has really, really helped me. And then, like I said, some experiences that we've had ourselves, even as a pastor, has uh, allowed me to be able to um, to minister to people and to the needs of people on the level that they're on uh, by mm -hmm. the grace of 
God and just seeking the wisdom of God. So um, I just, I just, I just um, uh, praise God for the experiences that we've had. Not a shame of the experiences, not a uh, shame of the things that we've had to encounter, because uh, it has really graced me to be able uh, to help others. And so for that, I'm appreciative. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I would say for me, um, I think we might have got this from Ma, just the this intuitiveness to, it's, this, it's discernment. Mom and dad are extremely uh, very, that's one of their spiritual gifts. Um, dad can read a person. He won't say he can read you. He can read your mail. And of course, mom, you have that prophetic gift. Um, so I mm-hmm. think we're just innately, um, we have the gift of just discernment. So the ability to look at a person that is hurting and may not say that they're hurting, because here's what I've learned being in church my whole life is that most of us that come to church, we are professional mask wearers. We know how to put yes. on masks. Okay. Um, we have colloquialisms like, you know, God is good. Everybody says all the time. And then somebody says all the time. Then somebody says God is good. But I've realized that in spite of God's goodness, they are still hurting people. They mm-hmm. are still husbands that don't necessarily know how to be a husband. They're doing the best they can. They are mothers that don't know how to be mothers to their kids. They're doing the best they can. So I think one thing that I've learned is when I approach people, I approach it with the mentality that we are all broken. I don't care who you are. I don't care how much money you got in the bank. I don't care how big your house is. I don't care how good you look. Every last one of us are broken. It happened whenever Adam dropped the ball in the garden. We were born in sin, shaped in iniquity. We were born broken. And it, and it uh-huh. causes me the, the real need of, of a relationship with, with Jesus. And I want to go spiritual here before I go practical. So I think professionally, whenever I approach people, I approach them from the vantage point that everybody, all of us are broken. Mm-hmm. All of us are in need of, of some form of help. Nobody has it together. And I think mm-hmm. it kind of is the playing field because sometimes we can kind of get discombobulated in a perspective of people and we think, okay, no, you got it together. And no, you don't. But at the end of the day, we're all we're all struggling to try to make it through this thing called life. So that is the manner upon which I approach people. That is the manner upon which I approach myself. My kids mm-hmm. is, mm-hmm. hey, we're all in need of some form of help. Yes, yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, um, you know, we're getting a little bit of feedback from that comment you made about um, mask wearers, you know, um, Celestine Perry says uh hey i I know who she is uh thank you for joining um but listen uh she says mask wearers yeah she said this is true and and it it is you know that's why i said a lot of times you know we we uh, rely on people to see but we have to be accountable and say well i need to speak up you know i don't want to just show up and play the part do you understand what i'm saying uh, I don't want to just show up. So, Lord, help me not to just show up and play the part. But we've got to really get in there and do life with people, which means when I'm in my, you know, in my healthy place, when I'm doing well and all is well and I'm smiling and I'm, you know, I'm feeling great. Wonderful. We, you know, we're good. But when I'm in a sunken place, you know, come on, we are, we can we go through that. Sometimes you are in a sunken place when you're in a sunken place, when you're struggling, when you're wrestling with things, guess what? Can we still do life together? Can you handle me then? And I think that's what true ministry is. It's just like a marriage, you know, it says for better or worse. But, you know, we have to really ask that question. Even when we hire people in ministry, can I take them for better or for worse? Now, it doesn't mean without, you know, the absence of accountability. I'm I'm definitely not saying that. But that's what you're signing up for when you hire somebody or when you um, bring somebody um, into your ministry, you know, or, or when pe- just, you know, I'm talking about people who don't even serve in capacities and they decide, hey, this is where the Lord sent me. This is where I want to be. Well, guess what? In other words, you just signed up to do life with them. And guess what? Sometimes life gets messy. And we cannot, you know, you, you can't handle it with a gloves on approach. You understand what I'm saying? Sometimes we don't want to get our hands dirty. You know, we just have to be honest. It's tough, but sometimes we don't want to get our hands dirty. So I think it's absolutely true, guys, that we take off the mask. But then from a leadership standpoint, we got to get rid of the gloves. 
Okay, we, we got to get rid of the gloves and be willing to handle people and their stuff because we all have it. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's great. That's great. That's great. Okay, uh, Kia says, yes, that's why it's important to be real. Miss Sherry says, um, here people cover up very well. That's right. I am people. I've done it. We all have done it, to be honest, yeah, really. you know. Uh, mm hmm. Yeah. Um, Sharonia says, who we are when we are alone, when no one is watching. Yes, very good, sis. How do we deal with managing, staying true to ourselves and honest with the people who are helping is the question. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Staying true to ourselves and honest with the people we are doing life with or we are serving. That is so, so important. So thank you all for these comments. Um, we're loving it. We're loving it. We're loving it. Let's keep on going, guys. So what are some of the things you see? I know, Mom, you've been in ministry. My mom has also worked in the educational system for many years, too. She had her own um, after-school enrichment program for many, many, many years. So that, you know, on that note, you know that she dealt with an array of issues. You know, she dealt with all kinds, all sorts of dynamics. Um, she, she dealt with so many demographics. And um, so I just want to know, you know, um, like when it comes down to it, what are some of the things that you've seen as a pastor, some of the things you've seen as a mother, some of the things you've seen even as an entrepreneur or at, uh, in business or whatever on those levels? What are some of the trends that you have seen as it relates to um, uh, people of faith and mental health? Um. What are some of the things? I've just, I mean, we've seen it where uh, people were not knowledgeable. A lot of times we're not knowledgeable when it's time to step up, uh, when it's time to stand down, and then when it's time to just, you know, just wait, wait, wait situations out. I've seen, uh, I've just, I've witnessed a lot of times when, um, and especially, I, I think I deal a lot with, uh, with adults too, but a lot with children. And just knowing how, when to listen and not do a lot of talking, but really just listen, because you can you can really discern a lot from people and what people are going through when you just listen, have an ear to listen, have an ear to really uh, really get involved. Um, I've seen you know uh, situations where people would come in and, you know, they were, as Chris said earlier, they were just in situations where, hey, this is not how you come to church. This is not how uh, oh, yeah. you present yourself, you know, around a man or woman of God. You need to have some respect. And that is true. But then mm -hmm. too, on the other hand, uh, when that happens, we have to know how to deal with those, those issues and how to treat those people, how to love them, you know, mm -hmm. in spite of so uh, in ministry, uh, in dealing with my children and dealing with my family as a whole, I've had to, you know, really learn when to, like I said, when to step up and then yeah. when to stand down and just allow um, things to plan a uh, pan out, a uh, plan out as God has, you know, had, had desired for it too. So yeah. I, I've had quite a, a bit, uh, quite a few, a lot of experiences with people mm -hmm. on levers and having to still be there to love, uh, to care and not just lip service, but really mm -hmm. with, with, you know, with action, not, not thinking about the fact that, Hey, you know, somebody's, you know, see you uh, talking to this person or to see this person uh, with you in the condition that they're in, then they're going to think certain things about you. That never was my um, dilemma. I never had a problem with that. When I knew mm -hmm. that I was doing what I have been called to do, that kind mm -hmm. of thing that doesn't bother me even as a pastor now. Mm -hmm. I just know what I've been called to do, and I, I just trust to do that because we don't know where life's going to take us. Mm -hmm. no. I, I've, I've had to deal with some mental issues even, even from a family uh, standpoint. And so mm -hmm. it has got really, really be able to under, understand if that's the, if that's what you're asking for. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I think for me, where, um, where those trends that I'm that I'm seeing is um, pastors are having to face the fact that some of us, not all, I don't like to paint with broad strokes, but some of us have preached the gospel that only works on Sunday. Mm -hmm. 
and does not impact the person's yeah. money. Mm, yeah, that's good. That we preach on Sunday does not yeah. go over and is applicable to Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, then it's not the gospel. It's a version of something, but it's not the gospel because whenever I am talking to, whether it's I'm counseling somebody or if I'm teaching on a Sunday, I have to ask myself, God, I need you to give me something that does not address their Sunday. Sunday, they're around church people. It's like a perfect utopia. Everybody's just like you. They love God. They're shouting, they're dancing, they're coming to church. But the reality is the moment 1.30 hits and you go back, most of us sometimes go back to broken homes. We go back yeah. to broken marriages. We go back to kids that, that are going through things that they don't even know how to process. And then we wake up mm -hmm. on Monday morning, we go to work with coworkers that are sometimes demon possessed, <laughs> or we got a yeah. boss that we don't do, we don't really mess with. So I think mm -hmm. the trend now is for pastors to really to say, whenever I am speaking, whenever I'm teaching, whenever I am challenging, I want to make sure that I'm challenging with something that is applicable to their Monday. That is applicable mm -hmm. to their week. It is the most important thing. And um, so I'm starting to see that that trend a lot more. It's a lot less of God's going to get you out. And it's a lot less of about God paying your rent or God is going to drop a mansion out of the sky. And people mm -hmm. are like, I, I don't need a mansion right now. I need my I'm about to lose my mind. Yeah, I don't want a mansion right now. I'm about to lose my mind. I don't want a mansion. I want my marriage. You know? Yeah, there we go. And so, yeah, I think the trends now is a lot of a lot of pastors through programs. They are definitely working to make sure they are addressing those real issues. Because when Jesus came, when Jesus walked the earth, he did not preach to Christians. Mm. Come on now, it didn't exist. Yeah, those those were, those were the people that crucified him. Those are the people that did not yeah. want to hear him. He preached to mm -hmm. humans, not Christians. Ooh, he preached good. to humans. So I am mm -hmm. saying, you know, I think it's our responsibility as just people that are believers mm -hmm. to make sure that we are doing, we are talking to humans, not Christians. Yeah. Yes, you know? yes. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that answered your question or not, but that's just what I got. No, 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 no. That was good. Both of y'all. I mean, you know, just really, really good. And that that's the thing, you know, I love what I love about Ma is because, you know, Ma, Ma, the way she responds, you know, uh, is seated. You can tell it's seated in just years and years and years and years of dealing with, you know, just an array of things, you know, from different perspectives. And so she's not haste in her responses. She's very settled. And I love that. And then I love how you come in and you couple it with the scripture, you know, because this is the thing, like somehow or another, we have, um, we have removed it. It's almost like uh, we, we make it seem as if the mental, as if mental health um, is uh, so far removed from the Bible. Mm -hmm. I believe we had some weirdos in there too. <laughs> I believe we had some weirdos in there too. And I don't want to say, and the reason I say weirdo, I don't say that uh, to, because I, I should be careful saying that because um, I, I don't want you to think that you're weird just because you have mental illness. But the point is, is that's the way you feel like I'm a weirdo. So I come to put your mind at ease. If you think you're a weirdo, try reading your Bible. We dealt with people, you know, on so many levels. Do you understand that had so many different struggles? So guess what? You are not the only one. And I think that's one of the things that we, ways that we get it twisted. You start to think, you know, I am few, you know, I am one of a very few, but that the, the truth of the matter is you are one of very many. So even when I call it, you know, when I say, uh, you know, weird or whatever use, I'll use different terminology or whatever, but you think you're so different. The bottom line is you're not that different. Somebody needs to yeah. put that in the comments. You're not that different. If you're struggling with, you know, uh, sadness, if you're struggling with family issues, relation, relational issues, these things, you're not that different. Okay. We can show it to you all in the Bible. So I love how you keep pulling out those um, live examples in there from the Bible. We read every Sunday or whatever to help, to, you know, this to translate to, like you said, to our Monday, you know, um, because sometimes there is that disconnect. All right, let's see. Uh, Lakeisha said here, she said, um, 
We need ministry that has relevancy, yes, to daily living and our struggles. Absolutely. And uh, Cousin Gloria said it is very real. And it, it is very real. But that's why, you know, it's good to have those live examples and to remember you're not that different. Put your mind at ease. You are not that different. Okay? Yeah. All right. So and we're going to keep it. Yes. Let me, Angel, let me add something. Too, mm -hmm. and uh, it may be on on different levels, but if we all, if we all would take an inventory of our lives, and this pandemic has really, really brought a lot of things to the forefront in our lives, even as Christians, as believers in Christ, uh, we all have some 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 mental issues that we have to deal with, and like you said, sometimes we cover them up, but we have some mm -hmm. issues that that we, we really, you know, have to deal with. And uh, one of the other things I wanted to add too was in, in um, you know, growing up in ministry and in the, in the early ministries of our lives, uh, these mm -hmm. kind of things, mental illness was, was not talked about, not in church. Mm -hmm. Cause if no. you made, if, if it made it look or seem like you had some uh, issues or you were depressed or you were going through a, a stage of anxiety, if they even knew what it was, <clears throat> you definitely didn't talk about it in church. Mm -hmm. That's not where you talked about it. So a lot of things that have surfaced now was things that were really pressed down then. And now it's being brought to the forefront that the church is mm -hmm. the the body of Christ is realizing that, hey, this is not something that the world needs to, just the world need to deal with. This is something the church needs to deal with. We have mm -hmm. people in church that needs help. We have people in church that are feeling uh, left out because they are having some issues. They're having some problems and they feel like they are alone. So yeah. I, I appreciate the Lord bringing us to a place in ministry as believers that we understand that charity starts at home and spread abroad. This is something that needs to deal with also. Yes, that's good right there. Charity starts at home and spread abroad. Chris, how many Tarian services and Friday night services did we go to where people spit up all night long? <laughs> yes. Rolled over, spit up all night long and still were broke still were you know what i mean still were mean come on now come on still dealt with issues you know still went home and and um didn't treat their families right didn't take care of their families you know these this this is real that's why i said we have to have these kinds of conversations it's not to shame the church but i just want i keep saying that you're not that different like when we really have the honest conversation you know there to understand like you got to go a little bit deeper. Grease me down. That's it. That's wonderful. And then teach me. Grease me down. Good. Let me shower, roll all over the floor. Even if I need to spit up, let me spit up so I can get delivered. But then you got to teach me. Because if you don't give me a new mind, as you always say, if you don't give me a new mind about an old matter, guess what? I'm going to go right back to the same ways of doing, the ways of thinking, the ways of believing. And guess what? Ultimately, I am not going to be set free. I'll sing about it. I'll preach about it. I'll shout about it. But I'll never see it. I'll never see it so i know that sounds harsh forgive me if it sounds harsh but i just want to say that like you know we, we have to go deeper we have to go deeper okay these tar them tarian services honey they taught us something <laughs> for it. let me tell you i would not take anything yeah. for it because i i grew up with an acute awareness of what the power of god is and and because mm -hmm. i was raised in it i know i can't live without it you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying rather have been have gone the way we went which is yeah. to know what it is like i literally have memories of people walking in drunk out of their minds mm -hmm. and modeling hands on them and watching them sober up and it didn't stop yeah. there. they would come mm -hmm. back and i watched her do life with them walk them through situations help them to get to the place to where they repaired their marriage and they became a part of the church. And see, mm -hmm. that, that's what real ministry is. Some of this other stuff people are doing, 
I ain't judging it, but I'm talking about I grew up seeing what real ministry looks like. And so I'm grateful. I mean, I did, I wasn't grateful for it then when I was 12 and we stayed in church all night. But now that no, I'm 40, no. 42 and I look back, I'm like, I'm glad I know exactly what the power of God is. Now I know the best of both worlds. I understand the power, but I also mm -hmm. understand the power of the principle. So it's both ends. Yes. God wants us to walk with power, but he also wants us to walk with principles. Um, mm -hmm. And so that's that's what I, I definitely, and I will always go back to saying, Ma, I appreciate the example, the spiritual yes. example that you were to us on what it means to really live for God and be used by God because we think used by God is something that is, oh, God used me, but used, like, used by God is like a dish rag, okay? Mm -hmm. The dish rag gets balled up. It goes into some dirty water to clean a plate. Mm -hmm. That is not a fancy job. Mm -mm. That's what it means to be used by God. Mm -hmm. Right. And I've watched God use you my whole life. And that has been mm -hmm. one of the greatest examples. Yeah. And then it didn't just start with us, even, even um, our former pastor, Baker. I mean, those were things that, you know, the Lord did through her, uh, just mm -hmm. allowing her to love people enough that uh, to be there for what, you know, at any point. And then uh, even now, during this time of, of uh, having to be closed in and all of that, God has still is still giving us ways to connect with our with the people, you know, not just saints of God, but with people. Period. Because He realizes this is a critical time, yes, and so yeah. He allows us to venture uh, into things that will keep be connected to the people. And like I said, mm -hmm. I have this thing about uh, very very few days go by that I don't hear from my children. Well, for very few days go by that the thanks of of, uh, of the Lord. Of God that ever read it doesn't hear from us one way or the other, you know. They uh -huh. hear from us. I, try, I trusted to stay connected to them because, like, you never know what people are going through, and sometimes just to know that you are there mean a lot. So, thank God for even uh -huh. ministries that, that He has connected us to that have a love for people. So, thank God for that. Uh -huh. Yeah, and I, I mean, I really do feel like we, we have to. Um, you know, be thankful for uh, the demonstration of the power, like he was just saying, to, to be thankful for the demonstration of the power. Because the demonstration of the power is the thing that causes me to believe that I can be free. Yeah. You know, sometimes head knowledge is just not enough. No. Okay. I've shared my story many times uh, of, of, you know, I've, I've gone through therapy. I've, I've seen psychiatrists before I've taken, you know, medication or whatever for depression, um, anxiety. So I know what that's like. I've been to different, I know what it's like to go to celebrate recovery. I know what it's like to go to divorce care. I, I loved going to those kinds of programs and learning, you know, in the moment, you don't you just think it's for you. But but I love going to those kinds of programs and learning. But one thing I realize is head knowledge is not enough. That's the gap that I saw in many of those programs, though they meant well. Um, you know, they do give you the scripture and it's wonderful, but you don't see a lot of the demonstration of the power. And so what you do is you get people coming and and, and they share their problems. I, I've sat in groups before where, you know, you, you share your problems and everybody goes around the circle and they're sharing, you know, you know, maybe y'all have experienced that too. And, and you're sharing, you know, but, but the bottom line is you come back the next week and you and months and weeks later, and, you, and you're still sharing the same stuff. There's a gap. Mm -hmm. there, there, there's some there's some type of disconnect there, and that's what we're trying to fix here tonight. We are trying to bridge that gap. Somehow or another, we still need to be told that Jesus heals. Somehow or another, we need to be told that, listen, you can lay hands on the sick and they recover. And that is some people's testimony. Some people get hands laid on them and they are free instantly. They are healed instantly. Believe it or not, when you're, when hands are laid on you, you are free. You may still wrestle with the symptoms, okay? But but you are free when God declares you to be free. That's the wonderful thing that I love about the gospel. And that's the difference in those programs. And that's what we want to do tonight is be a part of the solution to, to bridge that gap, to bring the two together. So Chris said, you said it perfectly. Um, 
we also we want to uh, be familiar with it and acclimate it to the power but we also want to make sure that we are applying the principle all right y'all all right y'all y'all are in these comments let me read some of those church was a hiding place for some many terrible people that's so true todd that's so true risa said trying to uh fake it until we make it dine on the inside absolutely thank y'all thank y'all thank y'all so so very much yes 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 um georgiana said here she said um but in that moment one may not have the strength to apply the tools that they are being given that's true but that's georgiana i love that you said that because that's why we have to stay accountable right mm -hmm. you know we have to stay in the fold right you can't get your healing like the lepers and then just be gone and bounce right? you gotta stay in the fold you gotta stay accountable hey ty hey hey listen um hey tamika hey guys i see y'all thank you so much for coming on listen um yeah you you gotta stay in the fold you can't just be like oh i'm, I'm good about because sometimes I, i've seen it in so many recovery programs people come they're testifying god did it I'm excited. I'm excited about my new beginning. They leave too soon. Mm -hmm. They forget I need the accountability. Yeah, I have the wisdom now. I well, I have the knowledge now. But guess what? Just like Georgiana said, I need some staying power like the old people say, right? I need to be able to know how to walk this process out because it is going to be a process. All right. Hey, Brittany. Hey, hey, girl. All right, so then um, Asia, I've just been getting a little bit familiar with Asia. Asia actually is in the mental health field. I think she's been in the mental health field for about 15 years, so I'm excited right. to have you on tonight, dear. Yeah, yeah. Um, she, yeah so she made, um, you remember her, Chris? Yeah, I do. So good to see you. Okay. We're here for you. Uh -huh. Yeah, so, um, so here it is. She says we can receive deliverance through the laying on of hands and prayer, but we also have to teach people how to sustain that deliverance through daily practical tools. Come on, sister. That's right. And she would definitely know because this is her field. That's what she works with. But again, we have to balance it. We have to absolutely balance it, y'all. We have to balance it. Okay, let's keep on moving. Y'all are good. Y'all are good. All right. Now, in a few minutes, I want y'all to put some questions in the comments in just a second, okay? All right, my next question, guys, is going to be, what do we do when the help that is needed is beyond our control? I mean, or be, in other words, beyond our capacity. What do we do when the help that is needed is beyond our capacity, beyond what we can administer, what beyond what we are even qualified to handle. What do we do? So for me, if somebody comes in, let's say if my kids, you know, Jaden is 15. If he comes in and he is like, you know, having a bad um, allergic reaction, something mm -hmm. that's beyond what Benadryl can do, what what am I going to do? Common sense would tell me that I need to get, get him in the car and mm -hmm. take him to a medical facility right mm -hmm. that's just common sense right you don't take a, a right. rocket science to know that i think it's the exact same thing as mm -hmm. and now are you phrasing this question towards like if you are uh you're doing counseling or if you're like a pastor from a pastor standpoint yes yeah, so both angles like take for okay. instance i think there are going to be times like okay you work in the mental health field also you work as a pastoral counseling right for um yeah. a company out in dallas there right. are going to be times also when you see there's some spiritual going on here and you need a little, they need a little something extra. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and there are going to be times as a pastor where a pastor looks and says, Hey, there's a little more going on here than I know about, than I'm knowledgeable about, yeah. than I'm equipped or qualified to handle. What do I yeah. do? So we can come from both angles. That's no, why we have both of you guys. Yeah. For me, I think it's the power of your network and, and being connected with other professionals um, other people that are in the field, both spiritually, both practically, um, in the event that I encounter someone that is beyond my ability to help them with my knowledge, I will pick up the phone and say, Hey, here's, uh, here's a client. Here's a person that I've been, I've been counseling. This is what they're going through. Could you see them? And I have no problem swallowing my pride because at the end of the day, I'm telling you, I don't have the ego to where it's like, I got to fix them. I don't care how smart I am. I can't mm -hmm. fix them. 
So I have no yeah, problem yeah. with referring them to someone else that could potentially help to give them the tools that I may not be able to give them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. That's good. So build a bridge, be a connector, acknowledge. Mm -hmm. You know, it, I, I tell you, the ego is a powerful thing. Uh, and, and our need to fix people, our need uh, to feel validated and to be needed sometimes can be so dangerous, and especially in situations like this, because you will basically lead. Um, Bishop Jake says you will lead beyond your area of competence and you are It's a dangerous thing to do. If you are not qualified, it is OK to say this is beyond me. This is beyond me. You know, and you have it, it takes humility to be able to say that. You know, listen, this is beyond my control. Let me be a resource, okay? We all know, of course, in the end, God is the source. But let me be a resource. Mom, what you say? What you say? Well, in situations where I've, you know, had to deal with, with um, things like that, um, mm -hmm. people on, on those kind of um, issues, um, of course, you know, I'll, if, if it's a time they ask for prayer or what, then I feel that they need prayer. I pray, but then I too uh, also let them know that there may be, you know, th that doesn't take anything away from me uh, believing in the prayer that I pray, but then I leave it as a choice for them. You know, mm -hmm. they need to choose if they're going to really de um, depend on the prayer, I believe God for their healing, or they need to uh, reach out. To, yes. you know, another some, some other resource. I do not condemn them for that. I don't tell mm -hmm. them they should. You understand what I'm saying? But I leave it as a choice for mm -hmm. them. It takes nothing away from the yeah. fact that I pray and I believe that God can, you know, will heal them. But I, I mm -hmm. and, and that, that covers it, uh, covers me as a pastor, as a, you know, okay. spiritual counselor. Uh, sometimes mm -hmm. you need to leave it open where people can choose. They can decide. Um, and mm -hmm. then, too, if you don't, if you're not, if it's, if you're not there, or if you don't have the the answer, or you don't have the, the right resource, then what your main concern is that this person gets help. This person get the yeah. kind of help that they need. So if that mm -hmm. means going beyond me and what I know, then hey. I'm for you. I'm with you. Takes nothing away from, you know, who, uh, what I believe. Mm -hmm. If that's answering yeah. the question. Yeah. Yeah. Because sometimes, yes, like, you said, like Chris said, your ego can get in the way. And, and, and you know, you, you can really get to a point where I don't think you need to go to the doctor. I think you just need to sit, you know, sit this out and, and believe God. Yeah. And, you know, I need to, you, know, you need to wait on the Lord. Well, we are living in a time now when you need to make sure and very sure that the counseling, that advice you are giving a person or giving people is sound advice and that it can, you know, that you, it, you can cover yourself if something happens. And that's how I, I look at it. Absolutely. And now um, that's so really, that's a good point that you just made um, is covering yourself. It goes back to that statistic that we read in the very beginning, which said 4% of churchgoers who lost a loved one to suicide say church leaders were aware of their loved one struggle. So that's the bottom line is when people come to you like that, you have an obligation Okay, you have an obligation. I know doctors take that um, oath, do no harm. Mental health professionals have to take that, do no harm. Pastors have to also take that. They may not sign a paper that says it, but we have to do the same thing, do no harm. So if not referring someone, not connected them to the right source or handing them off, it's a handoff. Yes. You understand what I'm saying? It's a handoff. That's all you're doing. You're building a bridge. That's what you're doing. And it's a handoff. And like you say, it doesn't take anything away from you. But we have to acknowledge that we are not going to be everybody's everything, even as a pastor. And on one of the statistics uh, talks about how important it is to recognize that because it was talking about one of the main reasons for pastors and leaders to burn out is because they try to do everything themselves. 
They try to do it everything themselves. And the bottom line is, we know the story of Jethro in the Bible, right? Him saying to Moses, listen, honey, you're going to kill yourself here. The way you're operating, you are not meant to uh, operate in isolation. You are meant to operate in community. So this is recognized. You may have somebody right within your ministry who has the credentials, who has the means to be able to help the member, the parishioner in, in your body. Why not hand them off? Yes. You know, that's just wisdom. And it says, I value you as a person more than I value my own notoriety. You know, and I think that's really, really, um, and that's really, really important. So and important. It's, it's, okay. It's, it's so important too that ministries that have those kind of resources right within the house uh, mm -hmm. to make sure that they're uh, you know they're willing to that leaders will be willing to let them be of an asset to the body. You know, if there's okay. something that the leader you don't have you're not qualified or you don't have the answer to or you don't know uh, what they might know then don't feel less than or inadequate because you can get some advice from them or the person that need that help can get some help from them you know mm -hmm. be willing to do that like you said bridge the gap come willing to whatever it takes now to make sure that whatever we need to deal with mental issues or whatever that we be willing to do what we need to do, that people can mm -hmm. get the help that they need. Yes. Um, did you were you gonna say something, Chris? No, no. Okay. Um, Lakeisha said something really powerful to your point there, mom. And she said, We must acknowledge our deficits as leaders. And that is something that even as a uh, for myself personally, you know, we, we have to know where we start and where we end. OK, we mm -hmm. have to know our frame. We have to know our capacity. You are not going to be good at everything. I don't care how great of a leader you are. You're not going to be good at everything. So what that basically tells us is you don't have to be good at everything. You just got to be connected to someone who is, uh, mm -hmm. you know. So in other words, if you're weak. You know, some some leaders are great um, when it comes down to executing. So they're more task oriented. They're great when it comes to visions and 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 saying, hey, this is what I want to see done or whatever. And, um, you know, bottom line, then then you, you have. But when it comes down to being relational and just getting in there and doing life with people, there may be gap, there may be a gap there. There may be some kind of a deficit there. Well, you just can't let there be a hole there because it'll, it will definitely impact the ministry. Right. So what do you have to do? You need to have somebody on your team who is very relationable. I mean, you know, relatable. Somebody who is very relational. Somebody who is not task oriented, but very relationship oriented. And that person will help be that bridge for you to keep you connected to your own people, to keep you connected, keep people connected. Do you understand what I'm saying? Well, let's translate this over into mental health. All right. If you don't have it in your wheelhouse, check your circle, check around you. Okay. Check around you. All right. Does brother Chris have it? Let's talk to him. Okay. Let, first of all, let's, let's just find out what, what are the needs of our ministry? Okay. What are the needs? If right now, if we were to ask the question, how many of, how many single parents in your ministry? Okay. Um, how many divorcees are in your ministry? How many widows are in your ministry? If we were to ask the question, do you know how many of your families have special needs children? All right. How many of your um, families um, have children with um, you know, uh, uh, behavioral issues. Okay. Or maybe how many of your ch ch parents have children on the spectrum? Like why, why do you need to know that? Because that's who you're serving. Yes. That's who's yeah. showing up for you every week. That's whose tithes is paying your salary. <laughs> and so we need to know that, right? How can I serve you? How can I do life with you? Well, I need to know about your life. All right. So that's what makes us have to go a little bit deeper and really ask those questions. And then when we get the answers, we've got to figure out who in here is can be a solution to this dilemma, to this issue. OK. All right. What are y'all's thoughts on that? Uh, we're leaders recognizing their deficits and, and putting the right people in place. 
Yeah, I agree. Um, I think it, um, awareness is everything. You, you sometimes you have a you don't know you have a deficit. Um, oh yeah, until that's you good. Are, that's good. until you are exposed to something bigger or something else. All right. Um, I, I, for example, when I was in um, Warsaw and when we were living in Turkey, as a musician, I was I thought I was a I was a I was a good musician. I thought I was complete. Um, you know, I didn't, I didn't, you know, I had some deficits, but I wasn't real. I like, okay, I'm pretty good. It wasn't until I went to a bigger area around, yes. around better musicians and more polished musicians that really began to show me that, yeah, you got hole over here. You have a hole over here. This is a deficit over here. It wasn't about them being better than me. It was exposure. It was something that I could not compare myself to, but it was in essence a mirror. And so I think that level of awareness is um, you get it through exposure, getting outside of your circle, getting outside of your yeah. your comfort zone, getting outside of what you're familiar with. If you're constantly um, talking to the same group of people, you know, yeah. it's time for you to get a new group. I mean, who's challenging you? Who who is inspiring you mm -hmm. to do something on a different level? Who is inspiring you to constantly mm -hmm. challenge yourself to be better, to fix your deficiencies? Or are you around a circle that makes you feel okay with your deficiencies? So I would just say, mm -hmm. sometimes you don't know that you have a deficit because maybe the environment that you're in doesn't expose the deficit. Sometimes it takes you getting mm -hmm. out of that, going to a different area in a, di in a different environment. Not saying you got to leave where you are, but sometimes going where mm -hmm. they be gleaning from YouTube. I mean, right now you can you can go to you can visit stuff without even leaving your home. Um, I think that's mm -hmm. extremely important. Yeah. Yes. Yes, I, I agree. I agree. That's good. Sometimes we don't know we have the deficits until we are put in a situation where it, you know, where, where, in other words, until a situation demands something we don't have. Right. Until then, a situation demands something. Yes, ma'am. We, we don't have the capacity for. And then sometime if we're not careful and willing to let go, we'll still hold on. I mean, de determine that, you know, uh, we can solve the problem or we can, you know, be the help that that someone uh, really need. But I'm appreciative that I am connected to uh, pastors, uh, our own pastor and other ministers that um, on some issues, they are very knowledgeable uh, when it comes to that because they have somehow, you know, been uh, they have ventured out into those um let me see how you say this. In other words, they have ventured out to the point that they are more knowledgeable of some things. Okay. Mm -hmm. But they bring it back to the congregation or they bring it back to where I can um, glean from it. But it, you know, I feel good about that because I'm grow, I grow and I mature a lot of times from what I learn through God, from God, but through other leaders that, you know, he has also. Uh, well informed. We have to be willing to learn. We have to be willing uh, to accept what we need, you know, from whoever has it, mm -hmm. and know that we can be able to help others. Don't be yeah. trying to uh, try to know, know something that you don't know. Don't be, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Be willing to learn. Be willing to know. Got to know who you are, and when you know who you are, mm -hmm. who have chosen you to be then that's, that kind of thing shouldn't bother you even as a leader. So I'm appreciative. I'm appreciative mm -hmm. when on Sunday mornings, perhaps, you know, Dr. Lee stands up and he shares uh, certain things um, that he that he really knows that I'm not knowledgeable of it because I haven't been there. He's been there, you know, but it helps me. It helps the congregation. It helps us all. Mm -hmm. Not only him, mm -hmm. you know, others that we are connected to, but it's a blessing. Mm -hmm. It's a blessing, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to the mental, uh, mental uh, health issues, you know, um, the, the ministry can learn. The ministry can really grow and mature and be very helpful if we would be uh, be willing to accept um, some knowledge or some wisdom from maybe other resources or other people. Mm -hmm. And I'm. I'm I'm, I'm I'm willing to do that because I want to help the people. And now, mm -hmm. like before, 
we are in a critical time and we need to be able to reach out and help people in the way that they need to be helped. Hold them accountable, but be there to help. And especially, mm -hmm. especially our youth. Our youth. Mm -hmm. Now mm -hmm. it's a critical time. You know, uh, Kurt had a very um, important question, Ian. I don't know whether you're able to see it or not, but Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I, I'll put it back on here. Let me see. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and just on your point there too, that um, what comes to me so strongly there is, um, you know, sometimes our pride uh, keeps us hungry and keeps us with those deficits because it's just like Elijah was hungry. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And the Lord sent the raven to feed him. Now, I want to know how many of us would line up to eat from the raven, right? But that mm -hmm. was his source. That was his designated source at the time. And do you know in our lives, it's, it's the same. We have a designated source. We have people that God strategically puts in our lives that we yes. need things from. They may not look like what we think they should look like. They may not be packaged. You know, and that's one thing about us. We have to just admit we are often very personality conscious. We pick who we want to eat from. And -hmm. sometimes that's what keeps us hungry and with these deficits. But honey, when you're hungry enough, when you get desperate enough, listen, if God sends a raven, listen, I'm ready to eat because I'm hungry enough. And I think that's where the humility comes. That's why sometimes, unfortunately, some of us, I have to say, even for myself, you know, having wrestled with pride, one of the things about it is you, you'll you get hungry enough to where you'll buckle down and you'll eat whatever he says eat and you'll eat wherever he says eat. And you know what? This whole process, like, it's not a one and done. We're always being processed. It's just time you think you're good in one area, you're going to look over here and see deficits in another area. Why? It keeps us humble. It keeps us very aware of the fact that we need God, right? That's the bottom line. You go to any of these support groups and they give you the 12 steps. One of them is admitting that you are powerful, that you need God. Well, that's the bottom line right there. We all are going to have things in our lives that keep us looking to the Lord. OK, so that's why I say you don't have to feel shame about it. You're not that different. We all have something keeping us looking to the Lord. But when the Lord provides, if he provides manna, whatever, he, however he provides the manna, we've got to be humble enough to eat it. And how uh, from whomever he sends it uh, to feed us, you know, we, we, we just do, you know. So so um, Kurt said uh, totally surrender to God. It, it I mean, is it hum humanly possible? And how much does it help? Okay, either one of y'all want to take that? He said, totally surrender. I think it was in relation to what you were talking about. So is it humanly I possible? Say, how much does I just want to say how, like, Kurt, man, is, I'm, man, it's so great to hear, just hear from you, man. Oh my God. Kurt is like, that's my dude. I can talk forever about, yeah, man, I love you. Um, Ma, I just get my little bit about it, and and you like you you you've been in it so much longer than I have, so I'm sure your your answer would be uh, much more eloquent than mine. I, I'll say this, Kurt, um, and to anyone who's listening, um, first of all, I'm gonna answer the the back end of the question: Is it humanly possible, and how how much does it help? Is it humanly possible? Yes. How much does it help? I mean, a whole 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 lot, a tremendous amount. Mm -hmm. Now let's get to the first part: totally surrendering to God. Um, surrender requires giving up control. Mm -hmm. Giving up control mm -hmm. requires trust. Mm -hmm. Right. Jesus. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So when I surrender something, I, if I have this pen is in my hand in order for me to surrender this pen to someone else, I have to be willing to give up my control mm -hmm. of this pen. Now, my willingness to give up control of this pen is predicated on how much I trust the hand that I'm giving the pen to. Mm -hmm. The hard thing, man, about like surrendering to God is most of us 
are closet control freaks. Yes. Yes, Whether we are. Whether it or not, most of us mm-hmm. feel like we can do a better job of being God in our lives than God can. Mm-hmm. And God will say, I'll let you go ahead and try to play that part. And you're going to grow through some stuff that it eventually calls you to see that you can't do this like I can do it, but I'm not going to take it from you. Mm-hmm. People have to give it to me. Okay. Mm-hmm. So here comes the back end of that trust. The reason why it's hard for us sometimes to give, like to really surrender to God is, is this whole trust thing. And the reason why it's hard to trust God is because sometimes many of us have unmet expectations where mm-hmm. God is concerned. So maybe it was a time in your life where you got you thought God was going to do something a certain way, whether you thought you were going to get married or you thought you was going to be further along in your life. And when God mm-hmm. doesn't show up the way we think he should show up, then what it does is it causes our trust in him to receive. Yeah, that's true. But God is like this. I am God. You are not. Mm-hmm. We mm-hmm. see things in a very limited perspective. God knows he sees our end from our beginning. So while we can only see, Lord, just let me marry this girl. God was like, yo, I couldn't let you marry that girl. And now your heart was broken. But if you had married that girl, it was going to take you through like years of purity. You know what? So I let her break your heart. Now, because you don't understand it, because you're not 15 years down the road, you charge and we charge God foolishly, which causes us to lose trust and say, I don't really trust you with my life. Mm. That's really what it boils down to. It comes now. Is it easy? Nope. Is it possible? Yes. Is it a journey? Is it something that we will spend the rest of our lives growing in that area? But it's one of the Mm -hmm. hardest things for us to do. Why? Because surrendering will require giving up control. And giving Mm -hmm. up control is going to require, I got to trust you. And at the end of the mm-hmm. day, really boils down to this, Kurt, and whoever's listening. How much do we really trust the God that we serve? Mm-hmm. I'm telling you something that I've struggled with. I ain't preaching to nobody that, you know, something I read in the book. I, I, my daughter was born deaf. Kurt, you know Harmony's story. You know, y'all know Harmony's story. She was born, she was born deaf. And, and I could not, I couldn't. Couldn't accept it. I'm sorry for taking up this much time, Angel. I'll be done. Just I'm gonna wrap real quick. No, 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 no. Free yourself. Preach on. Preach. No, no. And so I'm just talking about this trust thing. So she was born deaf, and I yeah, couldn't understand. No. I'm like, God, I, I haven't been perfect. I, I've done my fair share of, share of just crazy stuff, you know. But God, I, I, you know, she didn't deserve that. Mm-hmm. And I had to come to a place. To where I had to say to God, not my will, but your will be done. Yeah. And it literally, I heard God say to me at the end of the day, he said, Chris, she's going to be okay. She is in my hands. You know what I had to do mm-hmm. every day? I had to make a decision. I had to stop telling I had to turn my mind off because my mind was saying, is she going to be okay? Is she going to be able to live a normal mm-hmm. life? You know, are people going to take advantage of her? Are the kids going to pick at her in the school? Like that's, that's, that's torment. That's what the body and the fear has torment. That's what that was. I had to make a mental decision to say, I'm turning that off. And at the end of the day, God, I trust you with her life. Mm -hmm. So what it was, was a daily decision Mm -hmm. to say, Mm -hmm. not based on what I feel, because my heart was sometimes really broken. Yes. Yes. But it was a decision. Because it was a decision to say every day. God, I trust you. I think mm-hmm. that becomes a it becomes like a muscle that if you work it, you become stronger in that area. And that helps us to relinquish control of our lives. And we wake up every day and we say, you know what, God, listen, consider the lilies of the field. They're not worrying about things. They're not worrying about what they're going to yeah. eat. You know what, God, if you're going to do that for them at the end of the day, you hold my world in your hand. When Jesus died on the mm-hmm. cross, the last thing he said is, Father, into your hands, I commit my life. Mm-hmm. That has to be our daily prayer. Father, mm-hmm. into your hands. I don't mm-hmm. understand it. I don't like it. It doesn't feel good, but I'm making a decision 
to the best of my ability to commit my life into your hands. Mm-hmm. Yes. yes. Uh, Chris, yes. Uh, Chris has said it so well. And uh, as he was talking, I thought about the point that when we um, accept Jesus as our personal savior, that's a phase of surrendering our lives to him then. But we have, must understand there's a process that each of us walk, have to walk out. And that process mm -hmm. calls us uh, calls for surrendering daily. Paul said we die daily. Yeah. So uh, as we walk the process out, as uh, the things God allows you know us to encounter that grows and matures us, it's a it's a daily walk, and it is a mm -hmm. process. But in that process, we are daily uh, surrendering our will, and that's what we're supposed to be doing is daily surrendering our total will to the will of God. And that mm -hmm. is a process. It mm -hmm. is a process. But he mm -hmm. graces us to walk that process out. And as Chris said, there have to be trust. You can't, you can't surrender to someone totally that you don't trust. You mm -hmm. have to you have to trust them. I didn't trust everybody with my kids, but to, to yeah. those that I did leave them with, I trusted them totally to take care of them until I, you know, um, returned from where I was going or whatever. So you have to have trust. You have to trust. And we have to trust God if we intend to um, really surrender our all to him. Um, I mean, totally surrender to him. So it is a process. It is a process. Yeah. And I, I believe that trust, you know, it comes um, with maturing in the faith because it's, mm -hmm. it's hard to trust somebody you don't know. And so right. I think, you know, we absolutely have to understand that as your relationship with God evolves, you know, as you mature in the faith, you grow in levels of trust. You understand what I'm saying? You you don't expect somebody who's new to the faith, you know, to come in just automatically. Now, sometimes now I have seen where sometimes uh, the ones that are not, I won't say institutionalized, <laughs> but the ones that, that are unchurched, sometimes it's a little easier for them, you know, uh, to, to trust and to get like plug right in and to just go hard and just to, to, to sell out. Why is it so difficult for those of us who are churched? You know, why why do we struggle so much with it? With you know, and, and wrestle so much with? Uh, I heard you say on one of your posts one day you said that there has to be um, sometimes there's a gap between what we say and what we what we know and what we do, or what we say and what we do, and that's where I'm saying I think sometimes when you're unchurched. Or whatever you know and god does it for you you see this like it, it's different for them but for those of us who've been in it years and years and years why do we struggle so much you know with the with these simple sometimes the simple things mm -hmm. I, I mean it's like the reason why you you know my my you and dad have been married how long how long have you been married 49 um, years yeah. almost 50 years in almost 50 years the reason why it would probably be a little bit, I'm not going to say more difficult, but they've had more opportunities to fail each other. Mm -hmm. The person that just got married or the person that just met somebody, they don't know no better. Mm -hmm. Oh, and that's, it, it, it's that maturity. Like there, there have been times in 50 years that mom probably said, why am I still married to Paul? Or my dad is probably like, why am I still married to Faye? Mm -hmm. It's the decision. Yeah. That's the, that's, the, that's the daily decision to say, even when I don't quite understand you, God. Now, this is, this mm -hmm. is, can be like, you know, you can attach this to mental health too. Like, there are times when I've been very upfront with my, with my I ain't gonna say my battle, but just my journey with depression. And, and um, there are times I was like, man, I don't even wanna get out the bed. Now, mm -hmm. I could have just produced an amazing record, or I could have just had the most amazing experience. Yeah, okay, man. Mm -hmm. Because after every mountain, you're gonna to go to a valley. It happened with mm -hmm. Elijah. It's, that's just the trajectory of how it works. But what I have to do in those moments is I can say, well, I can lean to my own understanding, which is very limited. 
oh, I can just acknowledge you and trust you. Mm -hmm. is, is my When I lean to my own understanding, I have never, never gotten it right whenever I've done that. But let me tell you, mm -hmm. I have never gotten it wrong whenever I made the decision to say, God, I know we've been walking together for a minute and you might haven't done things the way I thought you should have done it. But at the end of the mm -hmm. day, you're God and I am not. And I trust you. I'm going to make a decision to trust you with this. Am I supposed to take this promotion or not? Am mm -hmm. I supposed to marry this person or not? Am I supposed to take this job or not? At the end of the day, I'm going to trust that you're going to order my steps. I mm -hmm. trust you, God. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to make it sound like it's simple because it's not. It is painful. Mm -hmm. But as a believer, it's all we have is the currency of our relationship. Mm -hmm. the, the currency of a functional relationship would be trust. The, mm -hmm. the currency of a dysfunctional relationship would be power. Mm -hmm. mm, that's good. Mm -hmm. And so if your relationship with God, which is a functional relationship, the currency that you spend is your trust. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So oh, yeah. I, I just want to kick this in to Kurt. Um, humanly, no. Mm -hmm. I, I would say humanly, uh, we we can't yield or surrender totally to the Lord, but but I mean, uh, with His grace that's sufficient, yes. we can. Yes. We can. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We can. Yes. Yeah. So yes. good. Man. Yeah. And that's really I good. want to keep this in before I forget it, but. Um, I think I really appreciate being on this panel tonight because it's given me an opportunity to just uh, share something. I am more aware now and more able to help uh, others that may be going through some mental uh, uh, health issues or just having to deal with someone else that, that perhaps is uh, having mental uh, health issues because uh, the, something that the Lord allowed us to experience ourselves uh, last year, a uh, couple of months, maybe over in the year when after uh, the uh, coronavirus came in, and we had, mm -hmm. we we experienced something. I know uh, that if the Lord allowed it, so that I would be in a place even now to be able to help in a way that I couldn't help or advise in day in the times past. But it mm -hmm. was an experience that I had never had, had never um, dealt with um, in my life. Mm -hmm. But through it all, God allowed me to, uh, he walked me through that process, that situation, those things that I was encountering that was new to me, that was very new to me. Um, the Lord walked me through it every day. I had mm -hmm. to connect to God in a way that was unusual, a way that I had never, ever been able to connect to him before. And I mean, God walked me through every day. There wasn't a day that I mm -hmm. did not have to get up and say, Lord, amen. Today, if I amen to get through this day, I need you to walk me through. It. And he did. And I'm going to mm -hmm. tell you that tonight I sit here more knowledgeable, more yeah. able to uh, to relate to somebody else that may mm -hmm. be going through some things, uh, even when it comes to um, dealing with depression or dealing with anxiety or dealing with these kind of things. And somebody would say, well, pa a pastor got have no business having to deal with these kind of things or go through those kind of things. God allows us to experience things sometimes so that we are well or better able to relate. Takes nothing away from our salvation. Takes nothing mm -hmm. away from us. I mean, being leaders, it's just, mm -hmm. it's not the situation that's the problem. It's how we respond. Yeah. Mm -hmm. to the, uh, the mm -hmm. issues that we're dealing with. And I had to mm -hmm. learn that. It's not the mm -hmm. issue. That's the big problem. It's how you respond to the issue. So tonight I mm -hmm. sit here grateful that I experienced what I experienced and walked and God walked me out in victory because I'm more <laughs> able as a leader now to help on these issues that we are talking about tonight than I was mm -hmm. then. And mm -hmm. I wanted to share 
Yes, 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 yes. Um, and, you know, thank you for being willing to just share that, you know, because, you know, both Chris and I, we're your kids. And we um, so, you know, we grew up in the thick of it. You know, we we know um, both sides. We know what it's like to, um, you know, be in ministry with you. We saw you walk through a lot of things. You know, we saw you walk through high seasons, you know, where things were going well and you had a great following. Then we also were with you when you when there was the great falling away. You know, we we saw you walk through that. We were with you when people talked about you in the street. And then you we saw them in the grocery store and we saw you say, hey, how are you doing? When you know they talked about you and we saw you walk through those kinds of things. We saw you be betrayed and and um, talked about sometimes by people that were closest to you. You know, the same people that you used to help, you know, um, turned around and they, um, you know, they did things or whatever that were hurtful. So we saw you walk through that. And the bottom line, what the reason I brought all of that up was, um, you know, as pastor's children, sometimes people in the... Um, People, even in the ministry, sometimes they have this expectation like we um, are just like our lives are extraordinary. So, um, yes, we may experience favor on certain levels, but we also experience opposition on many levels because of the position that you're in, because you're in the spotlight or because people know you in the community and things like that. So we have a very little margin. You may have sometimes, um, you know, you may have a, a margin where you, you it's OK for you to error. It's OK for your child to make a mistake. But don't let a child, pastor's child, make those mistakes, you know. So then what do you do? You learn, you kind of get into this uh, pattern of hiding right so we parade this image sometimes you know and um yeah we're hurting we're going through we're dealing with things even in our own home but sometimes you know we there's there's not the space always for us to have those conversations in ministry that's the purpose of this tonight as well they're not those conversations when i say that earlier i say it again we're not that different do, do you understand what I'm saying? We're not that different. And so the bottom line is I can appreciate you sharing what you're sharing because it levels the playing field to say we all go through stuff. We all have stuff. We all deal with stuff the same way you and your husband argue and fight the same way uh, Chris and his wife probably fight and fuss and fight the same way Chris probably... <laughs> has to repent to God for things he says to his children sometimes. It's the same way I have to repent sometimes for the things I say to my children. My mom and my dad, they fuss and fight sometimes. It's the funniest thing to watch. <laughs> but guess what? You're not that different. I think that's what will help us. You're not that different. The yeah. bottom line, he didn't choose me because I was the greatest in number. He chose me because I was the least of these. All right? So, 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 yeah, he picked me, but at the end of the day, I still have stuff just like you do. And what, what it does for me when my mom shares her experience, it says to you all that none of us are exempt. None of us are exempt. But it also demonstrates how important it is and how safe it is to actually admit it. To say, yes, I'm sad. Yes, I'm disappointed. Yes, I've been battling depression. Yes, I've been dealing with anxiety. You know, to just say it. And then to give the testimony. Mm -hmm. She can testify and say, as our sister Burnell says, he delivers, praise the Lord, right? <laughs> Right. We can say that she can say he delivers. Why can she say he delivers? Because he has delivered her. He brought her through a tough time in her life. And that brings me to another point. How many of you have faced that since this pandemic, since COVID? Pastors are trying to figure out how do I comfort my people? How do I encourage? We're going on. We're, we're over a year now. You're talking about compassion fatigue, right? That's a real thing, compassion fatigue. I'm trying to help you, but I'm almost burnt out. I'm almost tapped out, right? And so I think it really is important when you share things like that because it really does help. And the other thing I want to say, we're going to move on, uh, and we're almost done, guys, but the, the thing that I want to say to you also is this. Remember, 
sometimes in order for us really to get free, we have to be deprogrammed. Mm -hmm. You know, we do. We have to absolutely be deprogrammed. And I want you to keep that in mind that sometimes the thing that's keeping you from being free is the things you believe about freedom. What you believe freedom looks like, what you believe freedom feels like. It's what you believe. It's sometimes the very thing that's keeping you from being free. So sometimes we just have to be deprogrammed. We just have to absolutely be deprogrammed. And that goes back to the question I asked about how, why it's so hard for us sometimes, you know, the ones that have been in it for years and years and years. Um, why it's so hard for us to get delivered? Why it's so hard for us to get free or whatever? And and I think some of it is because we, we, we've we had some real good conditioning. You understand what I'm saying? We've had some good teaching and then we've had some not so good teaching. by people. They didn't know any better. They did the best they could, you know, but some of the things we learned to believe, some ideals and beliefs that we learned to accept, they weren't necessarily, um, they weren't necessarily right. We have to acknowledge that they weren't necessarily right. So we attach to an idea, we attach to a paradigm that we're still living by, but it no longer serves us. So sometimes we simply have to be deprogrammed. All right, y'all are in these comments. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. All right, um, Georgiana said, that's true, um, Angel. I think people have always put PK kids on a higher standard, but we all are human and we have all fallen short, absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you guys for getting here. We are human. No one is perfect. Thank you, Tawanda. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Then Tawanda says here, she says, um, very good. In order for us to be free, we have to be deprogrammed. Absolutely. Well, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. All right. So um, this is one other question that I have. Okay. Why do you think we have to talk about it? Why do you think the suicide epidemic is so prevalent now in the church. Okay, that's my first question. And and um, why do you think there's such a great divide between the spiritual and the um, personal care, spiritual care and personal care? Um, I'm, I'll just go in and Chris can come on in. But anyway, I think t my opinion is there's been a lot of um, sometimes covering up, uh, people not feeling uh, like they're uh, free enough to really open up and talk about the fact, look, I'm at my week's end. I'm, you know, I'm at the point now where, um, you know, something has to happen or, but uh, there is a, an open line of communication where people can just open up and admit this is where I am. So I think some of it comes from the fact that there's been a lot of covering up in where uh, church is concerned and not enough covering. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah. And it has caused people to, to really uh, feel like, don't not feel the freedom that they really want to feel to, to just open up and say, this is it. This is, this is who I am. This is where I am. You know, mm -hmm. and um, that's, and that's one of the things that our children that really need in this time is to have that open uh, line of communication where they can just lever and say, if not with mom, with that with someone that would, will listen to them and say, look, this is where I am. You know, this mm -hmm. is where I, so I think it's a minute. There's a days it need to be balanced. There needs to be less covering up and more covering. If that yeah, makes sense. That's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is, that yeah. is really good. I'm still in that mom. I am still in that. Um, I, I'll mm -hmm. say to kind of echo what Ma said with the, the silence aspect of things. Silence is the language of uh, a person who feels hopeless. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If, yeah. if, you know, I mean, if silence is a language of a person who feels hopeless, like there is, there's no more hope. What else? So you don't speak up. You're like, why am I speaking up? You've lost hope. So, you know, I, I think creating, um, creating a safe place where people can kind of come and be vulnerable and be authentic. Now, the way that we yeah. do that, I think, is by modeling it. Um, I can't expect my kid to do something that I don't model. 
the reason why I'm a, I'm, I, I pride myself on being a really good dad, a good father, is because I grew up in a home that, that had a good father. My dad, mm -hmm. he modeled how to be a man, you know, mm -hmm. get your butt out there, change the tires, wash your mama's car. You know, he taught me how to be a man. He modeled it. When I want to take mm -hmm. that to the church and I want to say what we have to do as pastors and as teachers and people in the church is model authenticity. Yeah. So that when people come in, they feel comfortable saying, I'm not OK. Mm -hmm. But when we don't model authenticity and we model we're all good, when they come in, they see a gap. That's not mm -hmm. real. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. just because I got a microphone in my hand doesn't mean I'm not struggling with the same issues you're struggling with. I'm there struggling with insecurities. I'm struggling with inadequacies. I'm struggling with all kinds of stuff. I just got a microphone in my hand. Mm -hmm. So I think when, when we model that level of authenticity of our brokenness and speaking from our brokenness, that's why whenever I preach and if I talk, if I teach, I'm only preaching this one thing is Jesus. It's the power of Jesus. It ain't it ain't me. Mm -hmm. I'm jacked up. I'm going to tell you right now, Chris Baker is jacked up. He's broken. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, mm -hmm. the one that controls my world, the one that has put my life back together, the one that has pulled me out of the grips of depression and anxiety, his name is Jesus. I'm going to only yes. teach that. Mm -hmm. so I think that's what we have to do in order to create a, a place where people will come into our churches and they won't go home and kill themselves because they can come into a place and see, I'm not by myself. I'm, it's right. not, yeah. See, when you're hopeless, it's because you feel like you're by yourself. Nobody understands. And when you are hopeless, Silence will be your language. Mm -hmm. So modeling that level of authenticity is something that's extremely important. I don't think so that it, but it was just something no, that no, 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 it did. There, it, there's no, there's no, 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 like, like the good teachers say, <laughs> there's no such thing as a wrong answer. <laughs> there's no wrong answers. There's no wrong answers, bro. Okay. Uh, all right, y'all. So, you know, that's a really, really good point. And um, so then how do we handle people's authenticity? La, Lakeisha made a comment here. She said people don't want to get their uh, gloves dirty. Well, first of all, they got on gloves and then they don't want to get the gloves dirty. And I, I don't say they, I say we, because, you know, we all can apply this to ourselves. You know, at some yeah. point, if you've served in any leadership capacity, um, you know, even with your children, sometimes there are things that you see that, you know, need to be dealt with, but you just don't feel like it. You, sometimes you don't feel like it. Sometimes you just don't want to deal with it. And then sometimes the things are so intense, so deep, so bad that you just you, you are you feel helpless. You don't know how to handle. You don't know what to do. Maybe you feel you've tapped out. I've tried everything. I've okay. I, so I really don't know what to do. So so you say, well, why don't you come to me for help? I don't even know what to ask for. You know, I, I don't even know what to ask for. I don't even know how to articulate what I'm feeling, what I'm, you know, what's going on, or or, or whatever. You know, so that's where I think it's important for us to know how do we handle people's authenticity. When they come to you and they say, hey, this is it. Hey, your chief worship leader just came to you and disclosed. Hey, man, I, I've been dealing with the depression, but I'm telling you, like, also, I, I, I'm addicted to porn. I know that's I know that's tough. I know that's tough. And please excuse me if that's a little bit too. That's just that's just who I am. But but I, I know I understand discretion. But these are real conversations because I have seen it all the time. I see it all the time, you know, and, and that's the bottom line. How, how do you deal with that? That brother who's struggling, you know, because he says I'm married, you know, but I I struggle with a lust for other women. And, and because I have that struggle and I really don't feel like I can share and I can talk about it. I'm dealing with a, a deep or an internal depression. You understand what I'm saying? There's different types of depression and sometimes it's chemical, but also our environments and there are certain stimuli that influence the chemistry of our brain now. So situations absolutely can influence. How do we handle those kinds of situations? How do we handle that? Can, can we handle that? I, I think if you're going to be a if, if, if you're going to be in ministry, it is a prerequisite. How did how did mm -hmm. Jesus handle you? How does Jesus handle you, preacher? Yeah. Pastor, potentate, bishop, 
Archbishop, mm -hmm. because your praise and worship leader may come to you saying, "I I have a, an addiction to porn." Well, your addiction mm -hmm. may be the, your addiction may be the food. Mm -hmm. Food, yes. Your mm -hmm. your addiction may be the same. Yeah. I, you know, I think it's in Isaiah, and he's like, "Listen, there there is none righteous. It's on your best day." It's as mm -hmm. filthy rags. I don't want to get into what filthy yeah. rags is, but that's what he's saying. Even when you try to do everything right, when you dot every I, when you cross every T, it's as filthy rags to me. So mm -hmm. I think there is, there is, if I can judge you, that means I am entitled. That mm -hmm. means I have put myself on a pedestal. Right. And, and God will humble me. I have seen him do it. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. So I have to fight that thing in me that when somebody comes to me and disclose something for me to judge that because mm -hmm. I have to always be reminded that I got messed too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's it. If, if we would, if I believe that is, if, if we would create churches, mm -hmm. like every doctor needs a doctor. Mm -hmm. Every lawyer needs a lawyer. I mean, it's we we all are. are I, I I know I sound like a broken record, but the awareness of my brokenness keeps me aware of how great my God is. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I don't judge. Whatever mm -hmm. the thing is, and I have counseled people, and it's like, oh my God! But mm -hmm. God is kind of my ear saying. Mm -hmm. What if I responded to you that way? Mm hmm. Yeah. So I try to create that. I'm not perfect with it, but I try to create the environment with people that understand when you're coming to me, you're not coming to a perfect man. Mm hmm. You're coming to a person that's yes. broken, that's dealing with this stuff too. All I'm going to do is point you to the one that can fix us all. Do mm -hmm. not put your confidence in the flesh. That means don't put it in Chris, don't put it in Bishop yeah. so and so, don't put it in Pastor so and so. Put your confidence in Jesus. Yeah, and, and I know I you Pastor absolutely Brady. know that. I've heard Pastor Brady say this. She says, listen, until I see Jesus walk out of a hotel window, I'm going to keep serving mm -hmm. him. I'm going to keep mm -hmm. loving him. I don't care who, who the next pastor or preacher or whatever falls. I didn't put my mm -hmm. confidence in that human. My dad always told me, they put their pants on just like you do, son. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I think that looks how I honor and I respect, but I always come to this understanding. What this understanding is, I try to create an environment where people feel I'm safe because mm -hmm. I know that he is aware of his proclivities too. Mm -hmm. And that may, I mean, that may be wrong for people to hear a, a, a person. No, no. Real, but I'm not going to apologize for it. You got to understand I've been raised in church and yeah, I, I can't do the fake. The, the beauty of being raised with the real is I can't do the fake. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So this yeah. is me. But, but it's, it's, it's me and it's messy. Like Georgiana is talking about that in her comment right here. Um, she's saying the very assignment that the one chooses not to handle may be a life that we lose. And that's exactly what is, is happening. You may not lose the person. They may never commit suicide, but they may walk away from the faith. You know, that's even more catastrophic. You understand what I'm saying? That's yeah. even more detriment. So, so um, I, I really do feel like it's important. So, mom, practically, if we gave you a case study right here and gave you an actual scenario where somebody walked into your uh, your office, now you've already had this experience because we re we we've seen all of the uh, midnight hour calls. <laughs> So that's one thing about being a pastor's child, too. We have seen the midnight hour calls. We have seen when we all supposed to be going to the movies and family dinner or something. And so you meet somebody um, there and then all of a sudden they start bent about what they're going through, crying. And then you got to go to the car and pray for them or you got to take them to the bathroom and and uh, cast the devil out. Or you got to go in the bathroom, take them in to pray. We've seen all of that. OK, we've experienced all of that. So we know that you don't wear gloves. <laughs> We know that you do not wear gloves. You are definitely a in there kind of lady. Um, but you know what? 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 Just give me something that you would do. How would you? It. Todd said it so. That's my sister. She said it so. I know. It, I, it, but those are the sacrifices that we make. You know, those are the sacrifices that we make for the sake of ministry. Um, 
But um, yeah. So what would you do, Mom? What was the How scenario? Would you handle it? Just if like, okay, okay, well, let's just talk. We can talk about me. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Um, there were times when there were struggles that I had, right? And you were aware of it or whatever. You can talk about how you handled uh, me, some of the mistakes I was making, some of the decisions that I was making. You saw me struggling with certain things, you know, and, and certain things became public. You know, how did you handle it? Um, well... I've always, um, well, I've trusted to always have this thing with, I trust to handle things the way that um, the Lord lead me to handle. I can't handle it the way somebody else handle yeah. uh, a situation or how somebody else deal with handle their children or handle their ministry or whatever. I trust to handle uh, things that uh, concerns me and the Lord the way he wants me to handle it. Mm -hmm. when, I do, when I do that, uh, things seem to pan out the way that, you know, it's supposed to pan out. Uh, mm -hmm. I trust to look at a lot of wisdom. I um, I trust to not make it seem like, okay, you are, you know, you, you defend one over here, but then this one over here, you, you know, you know, do, you do a little something different. I trust never to do that. But I just trust to really uh, seek the Lord for wisdom, you know, as to how to deal with the situation. What must I do? Not according to uh, how I would, you know, what I think. But Lord, how do I have to pray? I honestly say in situation when it came to you, uh, whatever was going on and anybody else, I have learned to pray. I have learned to uh, consult the Lord. I, I really mm -hmm. had to pray. Spend some time saying, Lord, how do I handle this? How do mm -hmm. I handle it? You know, even when yeah. times when things may have happened, uh, when it came to me as a leader, uh, when it came to situations that involved my kids, I involved uh, my family or whatever, uh, I had to really consult the Lord. How do I go about this that, you know, I do the right thing. I trust to do the right thing anyway. Mm -hmm. So my yeah. thing have always been, uh, even when it came to my marriage, um, handling situations that involved my, 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 my kids and things that went down that maybe, you know, somebody else would say would brought a reproach. I've always had to consult the Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, I really have. I really have. Um, that's been my mm -hmm. thing. Lord, help me to do, these, do, the, do this the way that you want me to do it. Mm -hmm. you know, that's just always been the way that I um, trust to handle things. It's important yeah, to we me because mm -hmm. I mean, it, a lot of times I was given advice from someone else that maybe this is how you should do it. Or, you know, yeah. uh, if I was, if you know, as a leader, you, you, that, that ain't what leaders do. But then also I had, I, I, again, I really consult the Lord. I trust mm -hmm. to him. What do you want me to do? How do you want me to handle this? Mm hmm. Yeah. And, and thank God for grace, because like even when you don't get it right and your heart is towards God, he'll help you to get there. Yes. You know, and, and that that's the beautiful thing about it. And see, as as adult, I mean, as children, we judge our parents. But as you get older and you you have your own kids, you really start to realize how hard it is. And your biggest fear sometimes is screwing up your kids. And you look back on your parents and the mistakes they made. And, and even though you may still have to work through some things, if we're honest, at the end of the day, though, you are thankful and you can extend a little more grace because you see how tough and how difficult it is. Sometimes you're not going to get it right. Pastors, leaders, sometimes you're not going to get it right. You're not going to handle it right, you know, at first. You're not going to respond the right way at first. But when you recognize that you were wrong or you recognize that there was an issue, when your heart is towards God, something in you ought to be willing to repent and then turn to say, hey, I missed it. When you came and you share that with me, the way I responded, I should have responded differently or I, I missed it, you know, and it's OK for leaders to say that I missed it. You know, sometimes we mishandle people uh, um, 
In other words, unintentionally, we mishandle people and it's because we don't know better. But when you know better, what? You do you better. Do better. Yes. That's why, you know, that is absolutely why we need um, grace. So what we're going to do, we're going to close out. Guys, if you have any questions, go ahead and put those in the comments. We have one um, last uh, question here that we want to talk about. Um, so I want you right now, go ahead and put some questions in the comments. If you have some things that you want answered very quickly, we'll pick some of them. We probably can't get to all of them, but we will uh, pick a few of those and we will go um, through those very quickly. And then we will bring this thing to a close. And while we are waiting for you to do that, I want to bring this out as uh, we were discussing tonight, this dropped in my spirit. And it's and uh, what dropped in my spirit was build people because people are your brand. You know, when you think about a ministry, a, a lot of times we can get caught up in branding, right? You know, what the image that I'm trying to build, you know, how I want to be perceived, who we want to be perceived as, you know, what we want to be. It's just like when you go to a website, graphics and how they're intentional about what you see, you know, all of that. Th there's a reason why they do that, right? Well, ministry is the same way. When you go to a ministry, whether or not they serve coffee, whether or not they have greeters at a door, whether or not they choose to invite you back um, with flyers or with a, a, a follow-up mail or whatever, you know, um, they, there are people that are actually, that's their job in ministry, right? To keep people connected, to figure out how, you know, to bridge that gap, right? Well, here's the, the thing. Also, there are people in ministry that are, take care of your social media and your graphics and, and all of that, because that has, has to do with your branding as well, right? When you go to a ministry um, and you walk through the door, you sit down and, and the worship, how what the atmosphere is like. Uh, whether or not the people are warm, um, those things that set a ministry apart determine whether or not you come in back. Let's just be honest, right? Those things are going to determine whether or not we come back. Now, what I want to say is this. We can get a little caught up in those things and we can begin to prioritize those things. And we can lose sight on what I said earlier, actually doing life with people, just showing up where it counts, just showing up where it counts. Like we said, doing surveys, surveying your ministry, figuring out what are the needs of your ministry and then getting programs. And that's our next question, getting programs and things in place to be able to accommodate the needs of your ministry, not the ministry down the street, because see what I implement in my ministry, all right, may serve my group, okay, my demographic. You may try it in your organization and or in your ministry. It may not work. It may not be effective and it may not yield the same fruit. And you're looking and you're saying, well, why is that work not working for me? So what I think we have to do is we have to sit down and say, God, what are the needs of the people in my ministry? When I'm implementing things, when I'm doing things, we absolutely want to operate on a professional level. But I need to do life with people. I need to get to know the people that I, you know, I need to get to know these people. Do you understand what I'm saying? I need to know where they are. I'm, I'm talking about I need to know where they really are. Mm -hmm. All right. Not the conversations you have in the hallway on your way out <laughs> where you're like, I'm blessed and highly favored. That was an awesome service. No, not those conversations. Those are other conversations. Okay. That is how we figure out what is needed, what uh, uh, what modifications we need to make. That's how you brand ministry. OK, so, Chris, I know um, and, and, and mom, I know that you can speak on this as well. And Chris, you've traveled. You've been to so many ministries. You've served in many ministries over the world or whatever. But do, do you see that sometimes like this is more uh, more of a priority on branding ministry versus really, really building people? Um, I think they're extremes, you know, but um, yeah. effective ministries understand that their call and their purpose is to build people. Um, mm -hmm. If you build people, it ultimately will build your brand. I mean, it's like mm -hmm. it's going to happen anyway, because mm -hmm. I haven't met one person whose life has been changed because of a ministry that didn't go out and tell somebody else that the ministry changed their life. So my focus mm -hmm. can't be on brand. All of those things are good. When you're running a business or you whatever you yeah. need to make sure you have that. But the focus has yeah. to be on building um, building people. 
And so I've seen a lot of ministries that do that really, really well. And the way they service them is by, like you were saying, through surveying them, finding out the needs of the people, making sure there's programs that are in place um, to service the needs of their demo and the people that they're servicing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Mom, you want to add to that? You got, you got anything you want to share? Uh, I just I just know that with uh, with with uh, with our ministry, one of the things that we trust to do is uh, doing in Bible study or in Sunday school is have open conversations. Sometimes, you know, mm -hmm. um, sort of of um, just um, emerge certain things in there, and it causes people sometimes, you know, to just open up at those times. Those uh, doing Bible study or doing uh, Sunday school or um, just, just those kind of things. give them an opportunity to uh, really express themselves. So sometimes that that is what we you know that we allow that from time to time. If the opportunity presents itself, or someone has a need, or has a question they need to ask, we always set the stage where they are free, you know, to do that because it may be something that's needed to, for them then and not Sunday morning, uh, you know, when they come back to Sunday morning service. So mm -hmm. we, set, we just set, uh, set a platform where they can feel free to be open. And, uh, you know, they do it in a decent way. They do it in a way of respect, out of respect. But uh, mm -hmm. and too, before I get this, and this is probably the last thing I'll say, but uh, also to those of us that deal uh, from time to time that may deal with mental health issues and feeling less than and especially when it comes to um, the freedom that we might want to feel when it comes to ministries or whatever. Um, if we know we are chosen, we have to keep in mind, you know, we belong to the Lord and, and, and we, we are chosen. And I think you said this sometime back, we, we, we are chosen, but we may be chosen, but not prefer, preferred. Mm -hmm. You know? We got. To, we know we're chosen by God, but because of mm -hmm. our issue, because of what I'm going through, because of what I'm dealing with, because of uh, the type of, of uh, problems that I have in my life, I I gotta I gotta hold to the fact I am chosen, mm -hmm. but I may not be preferred by everybody else. Mm hmm. Yeah. So, and that that just goes back to just knowing where are you where you, you start and where you end. And sometimes that's that's just it. Sometimes you can take people as far as you can and then it's it's a handoff, you know? Sometimes you can get them where you can get them to, where you're assigned to get to. And then we absolutely have to be willing to make that hand. If it's really about the person, then we, yeah. we just understand. Just bid them Godspeed, tell them I love you, I've been praying for you, we thank God for you, we honor you, and hand them off. You know, it doesn't have to be this mess that we make it sometimes when people feel like they need to move on or feel like they, they need to what they need. They need to get elsewhere or whatever. We don't have to make it what we tend to make it um, in church world. You know, um, these are not our people. They're God's people. So, um, you know. OK, so this question I, I have. right here. Thank you, let me, let me clear this up. My point was. To, the, to those that, you know, that are dealing with mental issues or what, on whatever mm -hmm. level, my point was never feel, feel um, totally defeated because you, you, are, if you're, you know you're chosen by God, but because of what you're going through, you may not be preferred by others as valuable. Mm -hmm. That was my point. Okay. I want to encourage mm -hmm. okay. those that are going through. Um, mm -hmm. uh, those of us that may go through those issues from time to time, we got to know who we've been chosen by. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's good. That's good. All right, guys, this has been so, so, so great. So I, I only see one question in the comments. We're going to answer that question. And then we are going to close out. We do have a prayer request in the comments. If y'all can read um, uh, from Miss Jones um, and we'll ask my mom's going to close out with prayer. So she will cover that. Definitely. Thank you for sharing that um, with us. Um, and guys, I mean, things that are shared here, you know, that's the thing we're talking about, creating a self safe place. You know, we didn't have these conversations. We don't disclose these things for them to be shared. So we, we just like doctors, um, 
mental health professionals, all of them, pastors have that whole do no harm commitment. As people also, we have we have to have that same philosophy where each other is concerned. Do no harm. All right. Um, and so in other words, confidentiality means exactly what it means. Confidentiality. When somebody shares something with you in ministry, if somebody comes to you and they share something with you, they don't expect their stuff to be um, to be told, to be shared. You understand what I'm saying? Even if you have good intentions that they don't expect it to be shared. Uh, don't go gossiping about their condition or their treatment with somebody else and call it um, call it prayer uh, ministry because <laughs> that's not prayer ministry. OK, listen, that that's not prayer ministry. So these are the kinds of things, honestly, now that have uh, sort of uh, hindered our, our trust in um, the, the spiritual platform of help. OK of help. So let's make sure we are trustworthy. Okay. So Tawanda says here with so much church hurt going on, what kind of advice would you give a person who is going through depression? Thank you so much Tawanda for your um, transparency there. And um, either one of y'all can take that if, if you want to take that. Um, yeah, I'll say um, church hurt. Uh, I mean, it's, it's unavoidable. I mean, it's been around since the beginning of, since Acts chapter two, when the church was birthed. Um, mm -hmm. I look at church hurt the way I look at, this is the way I say it. How many times have I gone to a restaurant and they got my service wrong? How many times have I gone to Taco Bell and it was bad service so they got my my my, my menu wrong? Right. Uh, and I said, I ain't going back. But mm -hmm. eventually I go back because they have something that I'm desiring and something that I need. Mm -hmm. I look at the same way. If you there, and I'm not, I'm not absolving any of it. I think there, there are times when people take unfair advantages and do wrong things. P people that are in a position of power. Um, yeah. If you are in a place like that, I would say leave. You don't have to go back and and submit yourself to that. But um, again, that's why you know God, God, God wanted us to have a relationship with Him, and um, mm -hmm. because. We are the church. It's not a building. It's a body. And uh, yeah. so my 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 focus is always going to be on my relationship with him, um, because mm -hmm. even if the church hurts me, it doesn't affect my relationship with him. Sometimes we get it mixed up and we think our relationship with him is intertwined into this body called the church. That's not what mm -hmm. it is. God called me to be in relationship with him. So even if you get on my nerves or if you do something wrong and I go to your church, I don't lose my connection with him. Um, mm -hmm. As a pertains to the depression thing, you know, I look at that as a separate issue. If it's clinical depression, then you need to, you know, I think who I'm not saying this you to wonder, but it, that person needs to see a professional because when you start talking about clinical depression, um, that's not, I'm not talking about situational, I'm talking about clinical, mm -hmm. then there's a chemical right. imbalance in the brain. Um, mm -hmm. That's something that you need a doctor to, to talk mm -hmm. to you about. Um, that, yes. that you may get on medication, you may need to go through some other things that can help you to bring about the balance in mm -hmm. uh, in, in, in that in those chemicals in your brain. So I wanted to I wanted to treat it both you know both of those because I don't see them as combined. Um, mm -hmm. but that's how I would deal with church hurt, and then this is how I would deal with the depression aspect of things. Um, if you're talking about talking to someone and finding someone to talk to, then you know that's the whole thing of, of 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 finding that safe place to where you can be your authentic self. Um, it's mm -hmm. hard, but I think it's important that we have somebody in our lives that we don't have to wear a mask and we can be our authentic self. So, mm -hmm. yes, okay, mom. Chris Well said. Mm hmm. OK, so that, you know, uh, pretty much takes us to that um, resources. You know, what are the resources? And since, since she brought that up, you know, what are the resources The people in your ministries that are dealing with and, um, you know, really dealing with mental illness? What are some actual resources that you can recommend? programs and then which of them do you have i know chris y'all have um the grief counseling program now that you've implemented and y'all have done some thrive programs and you've got a men, men, men's ministry program and different things like that you know that y'all are doing so you can talk a little bit about that stuff too if you want um 
but yeah, d just share like what are those resources that y'all are using? Mom, you can share whatever uh, resources or whatever you would recommend and uh, which one of those you use at the church or have used even over the years, you know, um, in dealing with these kinds of situations. If y'all both could share. Well, uh, for us, we did, we had uh, women's ministry. We also I ventured out to start a men's ministry where we could, you know, work, um, handle, uh, be able to accommodate uh, men and women. We have a youth ministry uh, where we work with the youth and uh, other outside ministry because, uh, like I said, I have had uh, to deal with mental health issues where family uh, was concerned. You know, um, my si uh, one of my siblings, I've had to work with her, with them. And I've had, we, you know, there's mental health that, you know, that you can uh, go to. And um, uh, there's this, uh, places like um, the, uh, what is it, Wayne, Waynesboro uh, Clinic. There's got one that mm -hmm. goes, but places like that, that I know of, that I've had to yeah. cause, you know, of uh, family issues. And, uh, but like mm -hmm. I said, as for ministry, you know, we do have uh, women's ministry, we have the youth ministry. And we are now embarking upon a men's ministry where these kind of things mm -hmm. be dealt with. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I would say for, for, for me, a gym. <laughs> yeah. A gym. You'll be amazed at the heaviness that will come off of you if you would just exercise. If you would get out, and I know I sound like my daddy right now, but if you would just get out in nature, if you will walk. If you would engage in some physical activity, get some vitamin D in you. I think that mm -hmm. is, is as an invaluable resource. Like you said, we have men's ministries, like Mar was talking about, um, you know, youth, um, women's ministries, because there are certain things that women feel more comfortable talking amongst themselves that they may not share in a small group with other men. So we have, you know, sex specific, um, you know, small groups. Um, one thing I love about the Potter's House as well, is uh, we have um, it's actually a, a completely full fledged um, nonprofit counseling center that allows people to come in, whether they're parishioners at the church or they're in the community, they can come in free of charge and get get help, get counseling, marital yeah. counseling. If they're dealing with, and they yeah. have these are licensed therapists, and so having that resource is, is really really great. Um, and uh, so that that's something that's really great. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it, you know, between working out, you know, uh, the, the small groups and then having mm -hmm. that counseling therapist center. Um, uh, I think there's Christian counselors of America is a one that you can go mm -hmm. to online. They can good find you, um, you know, you know, Christian, uh, therapist in your area. I think that's a good mm -hmm. resource. As well, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, Psychology Today is another website that they have that you can find um, therapists and everything in your area. And I know COVID is going on. And also, even before COVID, some of you guys are introverts. <laughs> some of y'all are introverts. So we already know that, you know, it, you may not be very comfortable going uh, in person and talk with someone. Totally fine. Guess what? Now the world is so evolved. They have what we call teletherapy. OK, so a lot of therapists are doing that with their clients. They are having virtual counseling sessions. So this is the optimal time. This is the perfect time for you to get in there, talk to someone, get with someone to trust. And we'll have to do another segment on how to pick a therapist, you know, what to look for, what things, because you do have to advocate just like with your health care. You have to advocate for yourself in the mental health field. But the first start, the start is just to 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 get in somebody's chair if if necessary do it okay we've already uh, dispelled the myths about uh, mental health we've given you statistics and those things should boost this conversation should boost and encourage you tonight to know listen if you've been consistently feeling sad down depressed if you deal with like a uh, just an intense amount of anxiety you know if you find yourself having other issues we could go deeper okay that we talked about just nine types of depression alone right so that that's just one um, type of uh, mental illness. So, so there are so many. That's why we want to get educated as leaders. Get educated. Have people look in your circle or whatever. If you say, "I don't have the time," "I don't have the time," hire somebody. 
hire somebody to handle that for you to make sure that your ministry is covered in that area because you want to take good care of the people that you have serving you serving with you and make sure that you treat you you remember that the focus is to build people okay build people all right um eastern seals if you are in this area here um easter seals you can look it up right now online um or, or listen this is simple for everybody if you really need something and you need it right away you want to find out what resources are available in your area call 211 okay 211 you can find just about everything that you need they really pretty much outsource and you know you two people but they let you know what type of services are available um they'll uh, and then you know you go through your insurance to find out what is in um what is acceptable you don't have insurance not a problem all you need to do is sign up there's funding it used to be called IPRS funding. There's something else now, but um, Asia, I'm not sure if she's still watching, but she can kind of pick, probably get some resources. If you don't mind, put some resources in the comments. Anybody that's aware of resources, put them, flood these comments with resources. But listen, just make the call. Find out what you need. Okay, if you don't know what you need, just take the step. Just take the step and make the call. Somebody will find help you to find what you need right let's do that all right don't wait till it gets the ups on you and then try to get no let's get let's let's be proactive okay so guys um thank you so much don't forget eastern seals if you did, don't remember anything else in this area okay every area has that the listen there are programs i need to say it again because somebody's gonna say well look that's good but i can't afford it there are programs that will pay for it if it does um it is determined by a therapist or a psychiatrist that you need a little bit of help you need medication guess what there's funding that will help take care of that we see we have to speak to every demographic not everybody has insurance and that becomes one of the reasons why people don't get help so we're just kind of trying to put all of these things out there for you tonight if you say i don't have a car i don't have transportation or my husband and i would share a car or whatever my partner and i you know my, my uh, boyfriend and i share what whatever your situation is listen the uh, medicaid if you have medicaid if, or whatever public transportation they have connections for you if you get that type of in that program you get in that type of um funding guess what they will do they will help pay for you to get to the doctor from the doctor and to go pick up your meds. So guess what, guys? We have absolutely no real excuse as to why we can't get help if we need it. All right. So at the end of the day, remember, Jesus is Lord. None of this is possible without him. Um, and I'm so honored. I am so, so, so honored and so thankful, guys. I'm going to give you the opportunity now. Um, yes. Thank you so much, Tawanda. Thank you all, all for coming on tonight my family members um extended family everybody um thank you so much for this opportunity we have really really enjoyed it so guys real quick i'm going to give you the opportunity to support my guests let's give it up with some hearts for my mom pastor faye baker uh we do love her don't we come on y'all let's put it in the com comments let's get wish her well put some hearts out there and let's love on her thank you so much but i'm going to show you how you can support her tonight scrolling across your screen guys is going to be the information as to how you can support them my mom has a life poems book okay she has a life poem books where she's written poems for all occasions and she has a few of those left oh we want to get rid of them will y'all help us get rid of them will you help us get rid of them mom can you grab one and hold it up for us um she has those books available and so we want to help her sell out of those two nights so you go to that website right there autumnmbaker.com shop slash shop that's her publisher and my niece is her publisher you can go right there and can um get that book there chris and tina uh chris and his wife have a cooking show on friday nights y'all if you're missing it you are missing out you got to get over there not only that uh, Chris and Tina are both singers um, and ministry uh, minstrels at the Potter's House in the area of music. Chris has traveled all over the world. Chris is a producer. He has played and produced music for Israel Holton, for other people. Chris is now employed with multi tracks. So he's very, very diverse. But guess what? We are his hometown, y'all. We are his hometown and we want to support him tonight. 
So I'm going to tell you a couple of different ways that you can support him. Both of their cash app is going across your screen, but also go click on that website. They have shirts called set that say shine Lord. All right. We want to get their shirts. All right. So listen, we might can't sell them out, but we want to come close to it. We want to get as many as we can get one for you, your mom, your cousin, your sister, your brother. Mother's day is coming up. Go ahead and get those shine Lord short shirts. And not only that, Chris, does have music he and his son Jaden both have music um that they have done in spotify y'all chris was holding out he didn't even tell me that he had music in spotify okay y'all so he has an album called the sounds of the sabbath four he's written he, he's done um he's done his uh instrumental music albums he's done uh four of them right because this is the fourth one so this is his fourth album. So when you go to Spotify, all right, it's going to be Sound of the Sabbath. I'm going to put it right here on your screen so you can see exactly what it looks like. There's a couple of this bakers on there. So I want to make sure you pick the right one and go support my brother. Amen. All right, there y'all go. Right, that's who you're going for. It looks just like that. Sounds of the Sabbath, volume four, Chris Baker and it says peace on the cover that's what you're going to be looking for all right and you, you see you in that tra album you're going to get 13 tracks there and of course uh if you subscribe to spotify um you know you can play it as often as you'd like this is what we want to do for our family guys we want to shop with them we want to support them all right and then my mother here's her book if you want to see that also my niece too she has shirts and things as well but my mom there's her book right there life poems book she sells those for twenty dollars all right so if you want that get right on in there and get it i see those hearts that's right y'all so click the button click the button click the button go there now go there now all right um and it's um in this it's, it's scrolling across your screen all right guys that's going to be it for me um I just want to say one more time, thank you so, so very much. It has been an honor, Chris. It has been an honor, Mom, doing this with you. And um, guys, we pray that you were really, really blessed. Um, and what we're going to do now is I'm going to invite you to join me uh, Saturday nights. We're here every Saturday night at 8 p.m. We call it Bling and Glean. Those of you that know, I, serve, I sell $5 jewelry. And um, it's, it's an amazing business. So listen, if you're interested in shopping there, that information I um, was going across your screen earlier. All you have to do is go to bit.ly slash jumpstart store. And guys, that will be all. That will be all for tonight. All right. So guys, thank you so much. My mom is going to close us out with prayer. Thanks again for being on. And Chris, we are just uh, just so grateful to be on this platform with you, panel tonight with you. I enjoy you, love you. Angel, thank you so much. And I do want to encourage that we also during this time uh, uh, on Tuesday and Thursday at 12 o'clock noon, we do midday word of inspiration to help, amen, uh, all of us get through what we are going through. So tune in at 12 o'clock noon. Uh, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, where we're trusted to inspire you to hold fast. It's not over to God. Say it is over. And we, I mean, he will get us through this. So we're going to pray now. You all be blessed. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to say thank you. Thank you so much for your loving kindness and your tender mercy. Thank you for allowing this, this time in our lives, oh God, because you know exactly what we need. And we're just so grateful tonight that you've allowed us to come on and share. And we trust that we have, God, uh, pleased you in all that we've said, all that we've done. God, to get no, oh God, give no glory to ourselves, but all the glory go to you. Thank you for always, God, continue to forgive us of our sins, washing and God, cleansing us and making us whole. Thank you because we know that you are concerned about the whole man. Oh God, you, you are God that is able to balance our lives. And so we thank you for these kinds of times when we can open up and share the, oh God, these kind of topics, oh God, and not feel condemned, not uh -huh. feel oh God, out of place, not feel like we're going outside of, oh God, ministry, outside of the boundaries of ministry, but knowing at the end of the day, uh -huh. if, if what we've said and shared tonight 
is to, oh God, cause anyone to walk in victory to whatever they might be going through. It's going to all be because of you, because of your grace, and because of your mercy. So we are just grateful tonight. We pray for the, oh God, the request for the son tonight. We know that you, oh God, have his life in your hand and you are able, oh God, to do whatever needs to be done. You are a God that can do anything but fail. So we're touching and agreeing tonight that your will be done in his life. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, that not many days hence. God we will change, oh God, will be seen, change will take place for the better. We know that you are able and we bring yeah. everything concerned that baby's life under subjection to your divine purpose and your divine will in mm -hmm. Jesus. So tonight you get the glory, you get all the yeah. honor, you get all the praise for mm -hmm. everything that's been accomplished on this call tonight. Bless those that came on to hear, but trust that they will not only hear, but they will heed and they will obey. In Jesus' yes. name we pray, and for your glory, amen. Praise amen. God. Amen. Amen, guys. All right. Thank you so, so very much, guys, for coming on. We love you. We appreciate you praying that you have a great week. Listen, I know we're in the middle of a pandemic. Just know that God has us covered. That's the that's the hope that we have, that God has us covered. Um, and it, when I cannot see it, then I will believe it. There's that song. You arcing all things for my good. All right. I hope you know that tonight. Wrap your arms around somebody tonight. You never know when it's your last time. Make amends with those people that you may have issues with. Do it tonight. Make the call. All right. Don't assume. And if you don't know the Lord, make him the Lord of your life. You don't ever know when you're laying down for your last time. All right. So um, we just we just pray that you were blessed tonight. We love you guys. We love you. We love you. I see you all in those comments. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining. Hearts, hearts, hearts to y'all. We love you, love you, love you, love you, love you. Thank you so much for coming on, all right? And we pray you have a good night. Thank you so much, Chris. Love you. Love you, Mom. Love you, too. Love, love you, Mom. Love you. love you. All right.